Last week, the Texas Longhorns began their 1988 football season in Provo, Utah against the BYU Cougars. Playing without Heisman hopeful Eric Metcalf, the Longhorn offense sputtered. Sophomore quarterback Shannon Kelly had his problems with a fired-up Brigham Young defense, hitting on 11 of 32 passes for 147 yards and two interceptions. This one returned the distance, giving BYU a 26-6 lead. On the other side of the line, following in the footsteps of Wilson, McMahon, and Young, BYU quarterback Sean Covey led a Cougar attack that amassed 402 passing yards, the most ever yielded by a Longhorn defense. A disappointing season opener for head coach David McWilliams, but the Longhorns return home to play in the friendly confines of Memorial Stadium. Texas versus New Mexico, next up on HSE. From the state capitol in Austin on the campus of the University of Texas, Home Sports Entertainment presents the best in Southwest Conference football. And tonight, the Longhorns host the Lobos from New Mexico. Hi, everybody. Bill Worrell along with Norm Hitchkiss. And quite literally, this past week, the eyes of Texas have been on Hurricane Gilbert as it churned towards the Texas Gulf Coast. But fortunately for most of the Texans, it went south of Brownsville, and we were spared the brunt of the storm. But uh, Austin Norm has been under tornado warnings. Uh, the warning was just lifted a few moments ago. We should have some rain, though, and high winds tonight. Pretty nice day today for most of the day, but just before game time, a driving uh, storm hit, some fairly hard rain. Probably the biggest problem tonight, Bill, is going to be a very gusty wind, crosswind that's going to make passing very difficult. Well, the Texas Longhorns were embarrassed, quite literally, last week against Brigham Young. They gave up 516 yards, the most they've ever given up a game. They gave up 402 yards passing. That's the most they've given up in a game. And, Bill, it was to BYU, a club that got hammered the week before by Wyoming and barely rallied to beat UTEP today. That does not say anything very good about Texas' first effort. Though New Mexico doesn't figure to be much, an important game to regain some pride for the Longhorns tonight. Well, the Longhorns will be going against a suspect defense. New Mexico, uh, coming into this game, has given up a lot of yardage. Billy, this defense is past suspect stage. This defense has been convicted. <laughs> this defense over the last year is allowing 508 yards per game. 509 this year, 508 last year. And you can run and you can throw against them. That gives your offense some choices. Let's call, talk about a couple of players tonight for Texas. Eric Metcalf making his opening start of 1988. A very special football player. A very special football player with three catches tonight. He'll set the school record for catches in a career. He's certainly going to finish with the school record for all-purpose yardage in a career. A number one draft choice in the NFL, certainly. you got to wonder, though, how much does sitting out the BYU game hinder what chances he had of being the Heisman candidate? For New Mexico, they turn the offense over to a freshman, a pure freshman out of Granada Hills, and uh, he's Jeremy Leach. He's a big one. He is a big one. He's a good-sized kid. Granada Hills is the same school that produced John Elway for the Denver Broncos. This is a kid who can really fire the football through for nearly 4,000 yards total in his last two years in high school, but this is a raw freshman. Okay, we've got high winds, a little rain, and two potent offenses ready to go for you on HSE, and we'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Everybody and welcome back to Memorial Stadium in Austin, Texas, as the Texas band cranks up Texas Fight. And the Texas band entering from the south end zone, and that will be the end zone Texas will defend in the first quarter. The Texas Longhorns, as we told you, coming off an embarrassing loss to BYU last week, 47-6, meeting New Mexico for only the second time that these two schools have played football, and that coming back in 1948. The weather conditions at kickoff, and there you see great weather for this football game. And, of course, with a lot of football games around the state of Texas put off this weekend, the Longhorns kept a close eye on the hurricane and decided to go ahead and play it. And those are the conditions at game time. The wind could be a problem coming out of the south at wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour. The officials tonight, referee will be Joe Thomas, the umpire Bill Anger, Don Brown, Jarman, Redding, Saracino, and Mantu. Now let's
let's listen to the eyes of Texas. should have about 55,000 in attendance tonight. And the Texas Longhorns won the toss, Norm Hitchkiss, and elected to defend the South goal and get that win behind their backs. New Mexico comes in off a 36-34 win over New Mexico State. That's their first win since 1986. They opened this year getting slaughtered by Fresno 68-21. They were 0-11 last year, and in fact, over the last 10 years have had just one winning season. That was 1982 when they went 10-1 under Joe Morrison, who promptly hied off and took the South Carolina coaching job. Mike Shepard, former Long Beach coach, is now the head coach here at New Mexico. Scott Howard, you see there back deep with Myron Ashley, number nine. They will be back deep. Ashley usually handles most of the return duties for New Mexico. Clements will be kicking off for Texas and here we go and it's deep into the end zone. Will Ashley bring it out? No he won't. So let's set the backfield for the Lobos. Leach we told you about. Ashley is a good one. Yes he is. Good runner, good receiver. Owens is a track man with 4-3 speed and Duff, the tight end, caught at least two passes every game last season. The offensive line is the center, Steve Slater, will set it up. The left side, McKay and Howes are seniors. So here we go now, Jeremy Leach, the young freshman quarterback, 52%. And right away, the Lobos will go out of the shotgun. Quick outlet pass to Andre Wooten, and he gets across the 20, a gain of about three before you-know-who, Brett Hager, tackles in number 60. Defensive line, Steed, Allen, Hackamack, and Giles. Texas plays a 4-3. Allen replaces the injured Steve Llewellyn, the co-captain, who has a shoulder problem that may ruin his entire season. Hager reminds them of another number 60 that used to roam the 40 acres. Tommy Novus, Lee Brockman, the strong side linebacker, just back from a neck muscle problem that idled him in the BYU game. Second down, needing seven. And uh, did he catch it at about the 28-yard line? We'll see. Yes. Yes, it is a reception. Mark Berry was in for Texas. And there you'll see Bubba Jakes, Barry, Beerman, and Richard. They're still a little shell-shocked from the BYU game. Well, you can call these Longhorns really what they should be called is Greenhorns. Of the five corners Texas has, four of them are freshmen, including that youngster, Mark Berry. There's some great names back there, though. Two Bubbas, a Tex, and a Willie Mack. Well, where else but Texas? Third down and three. Fumble in the backfield. Texas has it. The handoff was to Andre Wooden. He was tackled by Oscar Giles, the young sophomore from Palacios, Texas. Just what New Mexico couldn't afford. They, they can't afford any mistakes if they're to stay in this game. Their defense is porous enough without giving up the ball inside the 25-yard line. And Giles makes the recovery. So the Texas Longhorns, who had been tormented by turnovers in their first game and the first couple of games of last season, get a turnover here. And now we'll have the football at the 24, handoff up the middle. And Darren Norris gets down to about 20 as we check. Shannon Kelly making his start, and of course Metcalf, and that Tony Jones can fly too. Yes, he can. Jones a legitimate 4.25. Nelson back from a collarbone problem that kept him out of the BYU game. Norris may be the most underrated player in this part of the country. Five yards every time he's touched the ball in four years at Texas. Second down, needing six. I formation Longhorns. Flip back to Metcalf. His first carry of the year, and he's 
down almost to the 15-yard line. Dave Warner brought him down for the Lobos. The offensive line is anchored by the veteran Alan Champagne. Cephas is a new starter at left tackle replacing McMillan, but realized the two tackles Texas wanted to start will not be here this year. Ed Cunningham blew out a knee. Brian Nielsen quit because of academic problems. David McWilliams on the far left looking on. Third down. Texas needing two. Hand off. Norris. Oh, he stopped at the line of scrimmage. I don't think he got it. And all of the Lobos in there led by Musa Kanucky. And we will see that front three. Kanucky with a big play there, but the best of this line is Bell, who started out training camp as the nose tackle, but moved over to make room for Warner. Musa showed some muscles on that. There's Daly, Martinez, Webster, and McCall, active linebackers. Martinez is a senior. Webster, their leading tackler. McCall is a freshman. Wayne Clements will be kicking. The ball will be put down on the 26-yard line. 36-yard attempt with a win to his back. Clements has an excellent play, plenty of distance, and it's good. Tell you what, Bo Bill, that's not going to make David McWilliams very proud on this first possession. To take over the ball inside the 25-yard line of a team that gave up 68 to Fresno and 34 to New Mexico State and not get a first down, that's not pleasing at all to the offensive coaches. But, Norm, that's a point a minute. We've only played three minutes in this game, so Texas with a three-nothing lead. Well, Bill, realize New Mexico's played 120 minutes coming in and given up 102 points, so that's pretty much their pace of the defense. <laughs> Wayne Clements, the junior. By the way, if you're wondering about New Mexico against the Southwest Conference, in their history, New Mexico is five 33 and 2 against the conference with all five wins over Texas Tech. That's right, Texas Tech, of course, playing the schools in New Mexico. Watch Clements has that nice follow through in the Army, knew it was good all the way. Island Park kicker, who first went to Tulane, transferred, sat out a year, then had to win the kicking job last year and did so after recovering from ankle ligament damage. He Good was kicker. 16 of 22 in the field goal department last year. In fact, Bill, let me suggest this to you. With Clements, who's a good kicker, Waits, who's a very good punter, and Metcalf, who's one of the finest return men in America. Is this the best kicking game in America? I think the best special teams, you yep. bet. Might yeah. be. Might and of be course, the... don't forget the young freshman, Willie Mac is right. also there along with Tony Jones. Kevin Nelson used to be a pretty good receiver, so they've got plenty of special teams people. Again, it goes to Myron Ashley, same place, and the same results as he touches it down in the end zone. So Texas taking that win, and so far that has been to the Longhorn advantage. Not much of a scoring drive here early, only four plays, netted five yards, but it did get three points on the board. Bill, I'm a little puzzled by the opening decision of David McWilliams to take the wind. Quite honestly, the wind is not a direct at the back of the Longhorns wind, and realize that gives the ball to New Mexico to start the second half also. And let's face it, you gotta play 15 minutes going that way and 15 minutes going the other way anyway. Deep snap position for Jeremy Leach. Here comes a rush, he's in trouble. Almost an interception. He was intending it for his big tight end, John Duff, number 84. But Texas really had that play smelled out. Paul Bierman was all over Duff. And the Longhorns, Norm, will probably go with the nickel back situation in a lot of situations. Tech Mercer now comes into the game. So you might see Strohmile in with Jakes, Bierman, Mercer along with Richard and Barry. Those two guys are not signaling in airplanes. Those are two guys signaling in plays. Now, one of them's a dummy, and I don't mean that as a joke. One of them signals don't count, one of them do. One of those two players is hot signaling in the play. And that's probably Ed Larson, who is the backup quarterback. Second down and 10, Leach will roll to his left. And it was trapped at about the 35-yard line. Intended for Al Owens, and he was covered on the play by Mark Berry. So they have gone right at Berry here early, the freshman from Dallas Hillcrest. Bill, I don't understand the shotgun to begin the game. I, I know that New Mexico must pass, but when you go to shotgun with the backs up in front of your quarterback, it just tells the defense, go ahead and tee off. And one of New Mexico's problems is their line isn't good enough to match up with the Texas line. Anyway, you got to deceive the Texas line, not tell them exactly what you're going to do. 
Mexico. Third down, New Mexico. Leach. And he overthrows everybody. Intended for Mike Henderson out around the 30-yard line. And Texas again, Mark Berry all over Henderson. And Mike Shepard, the head coach of the Lobos, one of the youngest head coaches in the ranks. Well, you can see that he looks a little disappointed. Now he's got to punt into the wind to that man, Eric Metcalf. Metcalf, an outstanding return man. This is Rick Walsh. No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's uh, Walsh, a very good kicker, also does their place kicking. But these are two good return men. They're kicking it to Garza. Well, he Mac Garza. Is it going to be a reverse? Yes, it is. Metcalf at the 50. Look out. 40 and down to the Lobo 35-yard line. And on that play, Metcalf showed you why he is one of the outstanding long jumpers in the nation. Boy, did he jump over a pile of people. Watch it again from Walsh's point of view. Well, Texas knows they're going to kick the ball away from Metcalf, so they just run the reverse to it. Now, why is Metcalf a two-time long jump champion? Here's the reason. Just missed making the Olympic team this summer. Yes, he did, and of course, he won a meet right before the Olympics when he long jumped 27, eight and a quarter. Mm. That puts him in world-class company right there, but he said he really always wanted to come back and try for that Heisman Trophy this year, that he wasn't serious about it, but I wonder, had he won it at the Olympic competition, then what would he have decided? Well, we'll never know that. First down and 10 now. The ball at the 35-yard line. Metcalf again. Gets a good block in the backfield. At the 30. And that's where he's run out of bounds. He simply outran Webster. Webster had the angle on him as the play started, and Metcalf simply said, uh, my friend, I've got three gears you don't have, and you're about to see them. Boy, what a nice block. Nelson, or not Nelson, but uh, Darren Norris threw for him in the backfield. You know, Bill, let me suggest to you that Darren Norris is going to get drafted by an NFL team and could make the NFL next year. He's a pretty solid all-around player. Texas needs five. First pass of the game for the Longhorns, oh and Kelly, that is a tough pass to throw. You know, that's a down and out about 10 yards, but he's really throwing it about 40 yards, Norm, when it's all said and done. You know, Bill, you sort of wonder why teams, and this isn't a second guess of the Texas coaching staff, you wonder why any team throws that pass. The ball's got to be in the air about 30 or 35 yards, and if you hit it, you gain about six yards. Kelly had it picked off last week against BYU and against the Cougars in the Dome last year. He was pilfered three times. Kelly back again, draw play Metcalf. He's got a block at the 25. At the 20. Cuts inside to the 15. He's driven out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. First down, Texas. The explosiveness of Eric Metcalf. Well, New Mexico isn't very big to begin with. They do not have a 260-pound lineman on either side of the ball. But when you're small, you say, well, what about quickness? Well, they're not as quick as Metcalf either. He gets to the corner, dances, simply circles the defensive back. And Metcalf's off to a terrific start. Don't you know he'd love to have a huge game tonight? First and 10 at the 11. Texas can make a first. A flag where they normally call holding is thrown into the middle of the line, and Norris is tackled at about the five-yard line by Darius Harris. But it looks like it will be holding against the Longhorns. As the officials sort this one out, realize these two teams have met only once in history. That was back in 1948. Texas won 47 to nothing, and old Eagle Eye Bill Worrell spotted that holding from 200 yards away. Yeah, I played in the offensive line and didn't weigh enough. I had to hold on every play. Let's listen. Holding. Offense. Still first down. Penalties and turnovers have plagued the Longhorns in early season games. Last year, David McWilliams lost his first two games to Auburn and to BYU before the Horns bounced back and rallied at the end of the season. So his teams usually start slow but finish fast. And it's first down, needing 20 now at the 21-yard line. Draw. Flip back Metcalf, good block again by Norris. 15. Looking for a block down to about the 12-yard line. Again, Darren Norris with a great block in the backfield. Steve Webster, the right linebacker, on the tackle for the Lobos. Does 
Eric Metcalf look more like his dad, Terry, every day to oh. you? You know, watch his stride, Norm. He's 5'9", but he has the legs that could fit on a 6'2 frame. Look at that high waist. He's carrying a lot more yardage per step than you'd expect a little back to carry. Usually they're prancers and dancers, but Metcalf's got a big stride on him for a little back. Draw play, Metcalf. Needs a block as he goes wide, and he's run out of bounds. Good pursuit by the Lobos at the 10-yard line. Chris Houston, 5'10", 205-pounder out of Sacramento, ran Metcalf out of bounds. That's five carries now for right at 40 yards for Metcalf, so that's almost 10 yards a carry. But again, New Mexico would have to be awfully happy to stop Texas here and force a field goal, and Texas virtually has to score on this play. They can get a first down, but they'd have to get the ball inside the one to get the first down. Watch Kevin Nelson. He flanks out to the right. Jorick Battle just checked in at the flex end. Kelly. Oh, my. Hits Tony Jones at the five. Bill, do you understand the play call? A quick sideline square out at the six-yard line? Well, it'll bring up fourth down. Hmm. Mike Shepard likes it because that means that his Lobos hold Texas again and the Longhorns will have to settle for another field goal if Clements is good. I guess they were hoping that Jones would catch the ball at the six or seven, have time to stop, turn around, juke the defensive back and get into the end zone. Murdoch, the backup quarterback, will hold for Clements. It's no good. He pulled it off to the right. He's a left-footed kicker, and he got too much foot into the football, and so Texas has had two golden opportunities and comes away with no points this time. So with 9.56 left to play in the first period, Texas leads 3-0. So it'll be first and 10 again for New Mexico at the 20-yard line. Texas has had the ball the majority of the time. Leach looking long. He's got a man wide open at the 45-yard line of Texas, and that was Mike Henderson out of Huntington Beach, California, and he had a couple of steps on Bubba Jakes. Well, if the orange and white uniforms of the Texas defensive backs look more than a bit singed, it's from the BYU game. They were burned repeatedly. In fact, if you look at the final score of 47-6, Bill, that was a little deceiving. Covey, the BYU quarterback, missed at least a half a dozen wide open receivers in that game. Oh, a little lateral. That will be an incomplete pass. It will not be a fumble. An incomplete pass. And it'll bring up third down. Yeah, Oscar that's... Giles thought that he had recovered a fumble, but that little shuttle pass by Leach is actually a forward pass. When you flip it behind the line of scrimmage forward, that's just a forward pass. It can be thrown underhand. <laughs> Boy, did Andre Wooten get a lick. <laughs> he never had a chance to handle the ball. Number 24, Andre Wooten. That's called the Utah series, that little shovel pass. A lot of teams use it to try to blunt the rush. The problem is the rush ran right into the potential receiver. It'll bring up third down now, still needing 10. Texas defense has dominated. Leach running for his life, and he sacked back inside the 10-yard line. The first man to him was Dwayne Duncan, the junior out of Austin Westlake. Bill, again, the, the I, shotgun is a formation. Bobby and Dwayne got there. Dwayne and Bobby, and look at everybody. Look at all the on and, and Oscar Giles also. Everybody on that front line for Texas. And now Rick Walsh will have to punt in his own end zone. Boy, this is going to give Metcalf a lot of running room. End over end kick. That's pretty smart. I'd kick it short, too, and that's a pretty effective kick. Yes. I'm really surprised Texas didn't come up and try to fair catch that ball at about the 40-yard line thing is it was so low that you'd have had to catch the ball on the dead run and that's fumble city bill again let's go back to the shotgun of coach mike shepherd when you set your quarterback far back it takes all the deception out a lot of the draw fakes a lot of the play action a lot of the screens a lot of the quick pitches they're all gone 
and Texas is just pinning their ears back and coming when New Mexico sets up in the shotgun. Well, you've got to have some kind of ground game, and the Lobos just haven't been able to come up with one this season. So Texas not having to be very respectful of the run. Well, as a matter of fact, they didn't come up with one last season at all. New Mexico averaged just 67 yards rushing a game last year. They've gotten 79 rushing per game so far this year. Bill, if you look at the Mike Shepard years at uh, New Mexico, the 13 games he's coached, they get well over 80% of their yardage throwing the ball, and boy, that imbalance can really get you against a better opponent like Texas. Well, I'm not sure Mike knows much about that running game, do you? The people he's worked under. <laughs> and uh, you, when you look at the coaches that Mike's been under, Sid Gilman, Tom Walsh, Lavelle Edwards at BYU, Doug Scoville, Mike Godfrey, Mike Godfrey Ted well, Toner. Those are guys who throw the ball. You're yeah. right. He's got a history of, of a pure passing game. Metcalf in motion. Kelly. Looking for Metcalf, and he overthrows everybody at about the 20-yard line. Jimmy Marshall was not fooled on that play. He stayed with Metcalf all the way out, and Eric drew a big double team by the Lobos. We would like to call Kelly, so far, is just one of three on the game for four yards. And here's a man that's kind of on the spot here in yes. Texas. Everybody's saying you need a quarterback. Kelly says, I'm that man, just give me some time. Realize Kelly against BYU hit eight of his first 13, but only three of his last 19 passes for 63 yards. Same play again, Metcalf goes in motion, draw play, Darren Norris, not much running room as he does get across the 50 into New Mexico territory. Musa Kanucky, Art Martinez, Dave Warner, all in on the stop for the Lobo. Well, Texas does have an alternative to Kelly. They've got a freshman named Mark Murdoch, and they've got a pure freshman named Jason Burleson hanging out here, too. Uh, Murdoch's an intriguing player, and, and if you're Kelly, you got to start feeling some pressure to perform, don't you? Yeah, Burleson is a giant at 6'7". He bench presses. He's the second strongest man on the team. Metcalf trying to get a block. He gets one. 45, does he get the first down? I think he stepped out of bounds just before he got to the first down marker. Steve Webster and Darius Harris did a good job of pushing Metcalf out, and the Longhorns, as you see it right there, will be about a yard short. Well, you gotta go here. This defense allows more than five yards per rush. I say you've gotta go, you really don't have to, but you've got a superiority against this team. Well, with that strong a win behind you, I don't think a punt would do you much good. It would go into the end zone probably anyway, and David McWilliams is going for it here on fourth down, needing a yard. Well, you know, here's the problem on these downs. Norris was a world-ranked sprinter. Metcalf is a world-ranked athlete. You can pop one in a short yardage situation like this. Oh, house backfield. Metcalf looking for a hole, and he's got the first down inside the 40. That's the old play where they flip it to Metcalf and let him look for room. He just stalled around in the backfield till he found the spot to run and he gained two. Watch the offensive line surge forward. Look at that block. Yeah, double block. Metcalf shut off from the outside by Harris, turns it in. New Mexico did a good job. They played the play as well as they could, limited to about a two and a half yard gain, but it's still a first down. Chris Samuels, number 23, was the third back in for Texas who threw the block for Metcalf to get the first down. First and 10 now, 38 yard line. Kelly, Metcalf, Metcalf, a couple of nice little moves. You won't see that any place but a disco normally, and he's inside the 35. Chris Houston on the tackle for the Lobos. Eric Metcalf now needs one more catch to tie and two more catches to break the all-time Texas career record for catches in a career currently held by Lamb Jones at 85. That was catch number 84 for Metcalf. He's going to break a whole bunch of records. In fact, for he's only about 400 yards behind Earl Campbell in all-purpose running. There's Norris as he dives across the 30 to about the 29-yard line. Darren Norris had 49 yards rushing to lead Texas against BYU. You know, Bill, the way Metcalf piles up yards, running, receiving, returning kicks, he could get the 400 he's behind Campbell by next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is a kid who averaged 
averaged last year about 175 yards a game, all-purpose running. Perfect eye, and they hand it off to Norris, the first man through, and you got a good shot from the secondary of the Lobos. You were right in the lap of Philip Vaughn, who made the tackle for New Mexico. Right now, that moves the chains, Nor. Texas is a superior club. There's no question about that. The thing that you worry about if you're a Texas fan is this type of vanilla attack of grinding it out is not going to work against the very good teams on your schedule, but you've got to start to establish something against somebody. Norris now in the backfield. They'll flex out Jorick Battle, who's in the game, along with Metcalf. Kelly picked out Battle inside the 15-yard line. A tackle by Steve Webster. But a great catch by Jorick Battle, a 6'2", 200-pound sophomore out of Houston Smiley. He went up high to make that catch. This club has a raft of really interesting, very young players. Freshmen and sophomore people with a lot of speed, good-looking athletes. Battle is just one of them. There's Walker and the Cash Twins and Samuel. There's a lot of underclass talent on Texas at the skill positions. First and 10 for the Longhorns. Metcalf delayed draw inside the 10-yard line to about the 8. Good job by John Bell to sniff out that play. The big guy, 6'2", 240-pound sophomore out of Citrus Heights, California. And they're, they're very high on that young sophomore. They think he's going to be all whack before he's through at New Mexico. Well, Bill, here's a defensive end who bench presses over 400 pounds, runs a legitimate 4'8", and is just a sophomore. I think he's got a good future. Yeah, you could find a place for him on anybody's football team. Kelly draw play. Norris had a big hole at first and didn't get there fast enough, and he may have lost a yard back to the 10-yard line. Good reaction by Kanuki. Musa. Kanuki, 6'3", 254-pounder out of Pasadena, California. The Musa is not exactly a Musa. He's 6'3", 254, which isn't terribly large for a defensive lineman, but he's quick. He and Bell are quick ends. They've messed up some plays. Bill, this crowd isn't going to be real happy if Texas has to settle for another field goal attempt. Well, it's third down and seven. Ball right on the 10-yard line. Flip back to Metcalf. Norris gives him a great block. Look at that move. Metcalf cuts inside. He's got a first down inside the five-yard line. Brett Heber brings him down. But what a nifty move by Metcalf. If we have this on replay, Norm, watch him use the block of Darren Norris to perfection. This is the dip-and-go move by Metcalf. Get it? Dip in like you're going to cut up and then go outside. Dip and go uses the block, then he simply turns it on, and he can get to the corner before New Mexico can get to the corner. I'll tell you, a great seal-off block, too, by Kevin Nelson that time. There's Metcalf, first down. The Longhorns need two for a touch. Is he in? Yeah. Yes, touchdown, Texas. Chris Samuels, number 23, a 5'11 sophomore out of San Antonio Judson, took it in for six points. Tell you what, Bill. You can get awfully fat being the third back in the backfield with Metcalf and Norris. <laughs> you can get a lot of touchdowns back there. Now Texas lined up for the extra point. Number 55, Cal Elliott was half Mark Murdoch. Now leading at 9 to nothing. Murdoch will hold again. Clemens is perfect. And Longhorns fire off the cannon. 4-16 left to play in the first period. Texas with a 10-0 lead. Wayne Clements will be kicking off for the third time in this game for the Texas Longhorns. 4-16 left to play in the first period. Texas leading at 10-0. This time he doesn't kick it as far. And it will be handled by Howard. And he is gang tackled at the 22 yard line. Scott Howard, the senior out of Albuquerque, did not have a lot of room. New Mexico so far really hasn't established anything. They threw a couple of short passes, have been very vulnerable getting bombed by the rush. And so far, Texas defense has handled them very easily. Scoring drive, as you see, the beautiful hill country in the background here at Memorial Stadium, of course. Hurricane Gilbert now just a memory. Boy, and you couldn't ask for a better night considering the forecast for this game about four or five days ago. You've got to. 
I thought we were going to be doing Olympic water polo. You got to feel very fortunate to dodge that big storm. Here we go with Leach again at the controls. Big rush by Texas, and he overthrows his man. Boy, the Longhorns had a big rush on that time. And that was Mark Steed, the 6'4 sophomore out of Stratford High School in Houston. And Steed was coming full blast. Tell you what, if New Mexico doesn't start to slow down the Texas rush, this kid Jeremy Leach is 18, but you can forget saving up money for his saving up money for his 19th birthday cake. He is never going to reach it. Well, Texas, the defensive backs took a lot of blame in that loss to BYU, but the defensive linemen made a point this week to say that they didn't provide much rush for their defensive backfield. Here's a handoff and a running play for the Lobos across the 25-yard line. Rocky Allen on the tackle for Texas. New Mexico has a bunch of exotic plays but it's tough to use them deep in your own territory and into a wind. The wind is fairly strong, but again, it's a crosswind blowing from the top of the field toward the bottom of the field as you see it. That'll give you a good indication of where the wind has come. Fumble. Leach couldn't get the snap from his center, Steve Slater. There's a big pile up there right at the 26-yard line. And Looks like Leach was able to fall on the football. And it'll bring up fourth down. So another costly turnover for Mike Shepard's very young football team. So Rick Walsh will be back on his own 11. 39-yard average into that tough wind on two kicks is awfully good for Walsh as he'll try another one. And he turns that point over again. Ooh. And the return to about the 35-yard line. Good punt by Walsh. Willie Mack paid for not signaling for a fair catch, didn't he? Well, he sure did, and he may uh, do that later. Walsh into that breeze, kicked it 41 yards without a return by Willie Mack Garza. So the ball is at the 36-yard line for the Longhorns. Shannon Kelly again the quarterback. You know, if you're New Mexico, your defense has played awfully well to be only down 10 points, quite honestly, with the situations presented to them. But, Bill, they've been out there so long. And I know it's only the first quarter, and it's almost silly to start talking about exhaustion, but it isn't going to be long before they get awfully tired of chasing Eric Metcalf. Jones and Nelson, the wideouts. Darren Norris, and boy, as he hit at the line of scrimmage. Great tackle by Art Martinez, the third leading tackler last year for the Lobos and mentioned by some to be on the WAC honor roll this year. 5-11, 2-11. Second down and 11 for Texas. The ball at the 35. Formation again for the Longhorns. 2-10 left to play now in the first period. Metcalf goes back the other way. Good pursuit that time by New Mexico. Metcalf looking for a place to turn around, but Steve Webster wouldn't let him. He did a good job of containment on the outside. That's what you have to do with Metcalf. Watch the outside force by the Lobos. Metcalf just couldn't get outside. Credit that play to McCall, the linebacker. Webster makes the hit in there, but McCall, the freshman, was the guy who got in so quickly and messed up the play. Third down, the Longhorns need eight. Kelly looking, across the middle, and he overthrew Jorick Battle at about the Lobos 45-yard line. So Kelly not off to a great start tonight. And the Longhorns will punt for the first time in this game. Boy, look around this league, and there are some quarterback questions in the league, aren't there? Alex Waits will punt from the 25. Boy, he gets a boomer. Down to about the 15-yard line, and look at all the orange jerseys. Oh, my. There are nine guys. Nine guys hit one man. Nine guys. That was 
That's Rhodes, the linebacker. Bobby Rhodes. Texas. Alex Waits, a fantastic punter, averaging 44 yards a punt. Ashley, Myron Ashley, nowhere to go. Look at this. A sea of orange. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bill, now where was Waits? What's he dogging it? The punter, why wasn't he down there to join in that? Everybody but the special teams coach. <laughs> Again, the shotgun for the Lobos. The ball on New Mexico's 16-yard line. Leach across the middle. And finally, he gets it to Al Owens. But Willie Mac Garza really came up hard. The young freshman out of Refurio. Al Owens is a good one. He is a speedster. He's been timed at 21.08 in the 200 meters. And that was back in 1984. And Bill, he's playing this season. Al Owens is under quite a burden. His dad is battling cancer. And it's a very severe form of cancer. So far this season, Owens with a couple of touchdown receptions. Second down and five. Leach under center. Hand off and look at Britt Hager. Oh, he was all over Scott, or Andre Wooden that should be. Hager had 25 tackles last week against BYU. But, but, Bill, the important thing is we're under 25 seconds. So what New Mexico should do here is let the clock expire. They're, it's a throwing situation. Just let it go. boy. Leach in the bench notices that they're going to let the, the time leak away, and they'll start the second quarter in a passing situation with the wind at their back. If you were Texas, would you have called a timeout? No, nah, not this early, I don't believe. That's exactly what the Lobos do as time expires on the first period, and you can paint this period orange and white. Texas, 10, New Mexico nothing on HSE. We'll be back with the second quarter under gray skies in just a moment. Again, everybody, welcome back to Austin, Texas, Memorial Stadium, the Texas Longhorns with a 10-point first period as you see the East Stands where most of the students sit here at Texas. Beautiful night for football. This stadium holds about 77,000. They were expecting 55,000 for the game, but they lowered those estimates somewhat because of the storm possibilities. I think Texas feels they'll be pretty happy if they put 50 in here tonight. Hello. I'd that, say that's dominant. That's pitching you? a shutout. Third down, needing five. The rush and Leach is sacked inside the 10-yard line. There is that Oscar Giles again, number 95. He has been everywhere for Texas, along with Ken Hackamack. Oh, boy, what a good-looking sophomore. Here's Giles. You'll get a terrific look at him right here. They looped him around, didn't they? Just, just uh, played a little game. And Giles, who has terrific speed, and Hackamack, who looks more like the world's largest. Oh, out of the end zone. And it'll be a safety. The snap from center went over the head of Rick Walsh. Oh, boy. When it comes apart, it comes apart, doesn't it? And it's coming apart on New Mexico. Now they've got to kick the ball away to the Texas Longhorns on a free kick from their 20-yard line. Scott Pettinger, number 81, is the deep snapper for the Lobos. And watch this snap as it goes almost to San Marcos. Boy, did he have some steam on that one. No hey. way in the world Walsh could get that ball. Just like one of your five irons, though, it hit the pin. <laughs> no, it wasn't shanked. <laughs> New Mexico really is in trouble now. They've established absolutely nothing offensively. You got a feel for their defense. The New Mexico defense has actually done pretty well in the game. But now, what do you do if you're New Mexico? Especially if Texas gets this ball and slams it in the end zone. You'll have 40 some minutes left in the game and you've figured out nothing offensively. Well, and the bad thing about this for New Mexico is now they'll get to punt, but they'll have to punt from their own 20-yard line, and the Longhorns will still get the football. And Willie Mac Garza will go back with Metcalf, and that's a couple of small packages of dynamite right there, folks. Here's an unusual situation. Most teams choose to punt the ball from here. Walsh is going to kick it off 
generally why teams choose to punt is they feel they can cover the punt better from this situation. Let's see if they can cover the kickoff better here. Boy. Willie, Willie Mack Garza with all kinds of rushing yardage and records at Refurio last year. They're going to kick it to Metcalf inside the 20. Here he comes. Still on his feet. Boy, he's as quick as a hiccup, isn't he? As he gets across the 35 to about the 37. Tell you what, that's pretty good coverage by New Mexico to kick the ball to Metcalf. That return was only about 12 yards or so. That's awfully good coverage. Charleston Fobbs on the tackle. Charleston Fobbs. Sounds like something off of public TV, doesn't it? <laughs> it looked like he was doing the Charleston as many moves as Metcalf put on him that time. High formation, Shannon Kelly still at the controls. We're just underway, second period. Hand off Darren Norris right up the middle. That's a good shot from our end zone camera. <laughs> Bubba Dean Blau up there, and he doesn't have a lot of wind to worry about tonight. No, he doesn't. Darren Norris concentrated on the books this summer trying to be eligible, and uh, what happened was uh, the weight got up a little bit. Norris, who was playing around 188, 190, got up around 210. He was literally a full back when practice started. <laughs> High formation again, Texas. Needing six for a first down. Again, it's Norris. This time he got a great block from the interior line. Gets to midfield. First down, Texas. Good job that time by Alan Champagne, Omar Saleh, and Dwayne Miller, the interior of that Texas line. You know, you wonder what kind of a career, and, and this isn't a second guess, Darren Norris or the coaches or anything, because Metcalf is a fantastic talent, but you wonder what kind of a career Norris would have had here had Metcalf not come here. Well, that's a good point. They did start together. Yep. He's a terrific player with very good speed. Really more of a tailback type who's fit in as a fullback here. Johnny Walker into the game now at the top of your screen and Jones at the lower part. You got your little bookends in for Texas. Pass across the middle and it's complete at the 45 yard line. Jorick Battle making his second catch of the game and Kim McCall, the middle linebacker, was in on the tackle. So far, Kelly throwing a lot of safe stuff, except for the one ball he threw down the middle to Jorick that was completed for more than 10 yards. Kelly, so far, is four of seven on the game for 26 yards. The play comes in, and did you notice Kelly checking the play chart that's taped to his wrist? He said, I, I don't recognize this one. What did he say? They have a lot of different formations. Here's another one. Metcalf in motion, but Norris will get the football. Gets a good block at the 40. 35 down inside the 30-yard line, but hold on to everything. Flags fly, and we'll have to wait on this one. Brett Heber ran him out of bounds, but we may have a penalty to bring this one back. What we have is two penalties here. We have one that was called at the snap of the ball that I think is illegal procedure, University of Texas. Then we had another one downfield, which also could be against Texas, by the way, for a clip. Yep. yep. And you take the big one. Martinez will get his choice, and of course, you know what he's going to say. I want the 15-yarder. Bill, what are those buckles on the back of Martinez? Looks like he's got... Hitches there. That never seen that on a football player before. It looks like he walked away with his seatbelt. Illegal shift. Offense. Still second down. I think football players now use those to stretch with before the game, and they just keep them right on them, North. Hmm. So the line of scrimmage now will go to the 49-yard line for Texas, right shy of midfield as New Mexico takes the larger penalty. So it'll be second down now. Texas needs 11. Will Miller, number 53, the former Kelly waiting to get the signal from the bench. Joe Thomas, the referee, has it all marked up. He says, second down, let's go. Norris and Metcalf. Norris.
Harris again, and he's wrapped up right away. That didn't fool anybody, especially Ron Shipley, number 98, the junior from Riverside, California. 6'3", 247 pounds. Shipley, the backup to Bell. He leaves fresh troops in. Boy, Shipley's in there like he knew the snap count. What happened was the man in front of him pulled to lead on the Texas offense. Well, the that only was problem, uh, McGrath, the guard. Problem about handing off to that first man. He doesn't have a lead blocker for him. And it'll be third down and 13. Nickel defense in for the Lobos. Kelly on the run. He can't look upfield. He's running for his life. And he's tackled from behind at the 36-yard line. Musa Kanucky, the senior from Pasadena, California. The Musa is Lusa in the Texas backfield. Tell you what, you know, New Mexico may have a reputation of a bummer defense, but you got to admire how hard these kids have played so far. Whoa, it's blocked. It's blocked. Waits couldn't get it off, picked up. At the five, four yard line, I think they're going to mark him out of bounds at the nine. And that was... De Dion Morrow, number 15, a cornerback, a freshman out of Victorville, California. And it looked like Waits had trouble with the snap, Norm. He couldn't get it out of his stomach. Oh, we're but let's wait. I think we're going to have offsides on New Mexico. Oh, my. Here's a play could have really... Now, see, Waits there lost the handle on it. By then, he had fumbled it once. Nice block. Nice job. But we're going to have the walk-off five yards against New Mexico. It nullifies the play. It waits must punt again. But there was a chance for New Mexico to get back in the football game. Somebody up on the right side, and it very well could have been the man who picked up the ball right there. That was Dion Morrow. Somebody up on that top side jumped off sides. So... Byron Ashley is back deep, and Alex Waits will punt again inside his 30-yard line. Much better execution this time. Ashley will have some running room. Up to the 25. Again, good special teams work by Texas. Much better play. Only six guys hit him that time. 10.40 left to play in the first half. The Longhorns lead by 12 on HSE. Well, the defense has been the story of this game, although Texas with 12 points, the Lobos have played pretty good defensively, and Texas has been excellent on that side of the football. I formation, first and 10 for the Lobos, Jeremy Leach at quarterback. Howard and Wooden at the backfield. He's changing the play, and Texas almost jumping off sides. Two seconds left on the clock, and that's 25 seconds. I don't think the referees got it. Yes, they did. Did they? Yep. Wait a minute now. They're both signaling stop the clock. Both people on the side. Delay of the game. Yeah, there we are. Side jug, uh, Judge Jim Saracino signaled it. He had it, but they didn't throw a flag. That's what was a little bit dece deceiving there. Blew the whistles, no flag. So it'll be delay of the game on the freshman Jeremy Leach. And a couple of veterans coming back for Mike Shepard, but after Leach reported, in the early fall workouts, they said he was so good, they had to start him. Yeah, and promptly quarterback Duffy Darty, a sophomore, transferred to a junior college in California. Leach on first down, going long, and it's intercepted by Barry at the 50. Mark Barry with the interception for Texas. Well, the pass was intended for Big John Duff, and he had a couple of steps on Barry. Had the ball been out there for him, I think this would have been a long completion. Again, the wind, which Texas chose to take instead of the ball, really doesn't seem to be having that much effect on the game. That ball was thrown with the wind, and yeah, that, Barry makes a fine read on the ball. That was, that was Al Owens, number 82. He's the sprinter. Watch Owens now as he fires past Barry, but the ball just hangs up a little too long. Bill, you know what? Leach threw that ball almost sidearm, if you saw his motion. And that's the type of pass you throw like when you're throwing a Frisbee, and the ball sailed like a Frisbee. Didn't seem to hang up like a Frisbee would. Kevin Nelson, Tony Jones, wide outs. Jorick Battle is flexed and Metcalf in motion. 
going for it all. Jones intercepted. And the Lobos return the favor inside the five-yard line. Jimmy Marshall, the junior out of Los Angeles. I'll tell you what, Tony Jones was open, Norm, and that should have been six points for Texas. Kelly did not get the football there. No, he didn't. Jones had two full steps. Kelly with excellent protection just stands back there, nobody at all in his living room, and he just underthrows this ball. And you know, even though Texas is ahead 12-0, if you really want to be honest with the offense, they should be in the 20s by now. Well, Shannon Kelly on the controls. John Mize, the offensive coordinator, probably giving him an earful. Here's where Leach really ought to throw the ball. Yes. Little turn-in pattern at the 10-yard line. He almost delivered it too late. Al Owens with the reception. And Bubba Jakes on the tackle for Texas. But, hey, if you're a throwing team, if you truly believe you can throw the football, it doesn't matter if you're at your own four-yard line. You throw the football. And it's nice to see the freshman come out and throw the ball well in that situation. That was a quick drop, too, and mm -hmm. uh, that put off the Texas rush a little bit that has given Leach a lot of problems tonight. It'll yeah. be second down and three. Bill, here's what I wonder. Why on second and three do you tell them you're going to throw the ball? Why not at least line up in a running look? Well, he was going to throw an out pattern to Owens, and nobody was home. I just don't understand why you don't at least create in the defense's mind at that point the thought, what are they going to do, run or throw? You can throw the swing pass out of a run formation just as easily as you can throw it out of a shotgun. Another thing, too, he doesn't have anybody back there to block for him. And when Texas brings a lot of people, Leach is at the Texan mercy of the Longhorns. So David McWilliams, who was a star center and linebacker for Darrell Royal in 63. Warm-ups on the Texas sidelines. The freshman quarterback, Mark Murdoch, warming up. Leach across the middle, and he has his big tight end for a first down. Fumble, and are they going to call it dead? I think so. It'll be a first down for the Lobos. John Duff on the reception. Britt Hager on the tackle, and you knew with Duff and Hager colliding, something had to give. Amen. Amen. This John Duff's a pretty good player. 51 catches last year. Realize in all of high school and junior college, you take his entire high school and junior college career total, he caught 33 passes. And he caught 51 in one season for New Mexico last year. So far this year, he's averaging 16 yards of reception. 6'6", 225 pounder. The NFL scouts like him. John Duff, keep an eye on him. First and 10 for the Lobos. Draw play. Good call. 22-yard line, Texas. Hager did a good job of picking that up. I thought for a moment that Andre Wooden had a little daylight. But again, at least you've given Texas something tiny to think about. At least you show them, hey, we got to draw a flight. Now, on second eight, running formation again, maybe give them a screen. Maybe give them a look in. Uh, maybe give them a quarterback draw. you got to start Texas's defense thinking in this situation. Second down and eight, the ball on the Lobo 21-yard line. We've got 30 seconds left to play in the first half. No, that clock's wrong, Bill. I thought it was. 8.24, I mean, and he sacked at the 10. Dwayne Duncan, number 48, and Bobby Duncan, and that's the double D, and that means trouble for Texas. Big, bad Bobby Duncan. His daddy was an NFL player and a pro wrestler. Bobby's married. He's got a two-and-a-half-year-old son that he named Bobby Duncan and intentionally made his middle name Austin, beginning with an A, so that his son's initials were B-A-D. <laughs> Bobby out of Durango, Colorado, and his brother Dwayne from Austin Westlake. And it'll be third, 19 yards for a first. Leach across the middle, big Texas rush again, and the pass is completed to Myron Ashley. <laughs> Tell you what or happened Corey there. Corey Brown, excuse me, but that didn't fool anybody. Paul Beerman was in on the tackle. Bill, what happened was they let the first wave through like you're supposed to on the screen. Problem is, the second wave was standing between the screen and the runner, so that when the runner caught the ball, boom. 
Walsh now uh, has bad memories of the last time he was down there near the end zone. The ball was snapped over his head. This time it's low. And a bad punt by Walsh off the side of his foot. And Texas is going to have excellent field position and right around the 35-yard line. Make it the 34. So finally, Walsh gets the wind to his back. And he shanks one. Well, if Texas doesn't score 100 points in this game, it won't be because they didn't have a chance. Rick Walsh, one of the better punters in the nation, watch his reaction. He got the low snap, oh, and ball. he knew immediately. Yeah, ball turned on him. Did you see as he dropped it, the ball turned on him, and the points went sideways? And we got a new quarterback now into the game for Texas. It'll be Mark Murdoch, the 6'2", 190-pound freshman out of Round Rock. And David McWilliams going to Murdoch to see if he can juice up that offense a little bit. Well, here's a chance for Mark Murdoch not only to look good tonight, here's a chance to stake a claim to the starting job. High formation again, Texas. Flip back Metcalf. Oh, he did a great job of cutting back, and he got down to about the 26-yard line. Steve Webster on the tackle, along with Chris Houston. But Metcalf, when they put him at the back of that eye formation he does an excellent job of scanning the field and finding his holes to run into it's got to be a pleasure when you're an offensive lineman to block for an Eric Metcalf just get a piece of your man well he reads so well he dips and cuts so well at speed the scouts just rule when they consider Eric Metcalf in the pros Texas needs two for a first and Norris gets it bounces off a couple of Lobos and gets to the 21 yard line Musa Kanaki on the tackle, first and 10 Texas. 6.20 left to play in the first half. And Kevin Nelson will bring in the play from the bench. It'll be Nelson and Tony Jones at wide receiver. Stephen Clark at tight end. Play action. Jones at the five-yard line. First down, Texas. Brett Heber on the tackle. Tony Jones, and boy, did Murdoch gun that one in there. That ball was thrown right on the money. Perfect timing pass. Jones does a square in from the far sideline. Murdoch sets up. This ball is drilled, Bill. You can't throw that ball better than that. Look at the little water bug, Squirm. He is so dangerous. One out of every five catches by Jones is usually good for a touchdown. Three-man backfield, and now Murdoch fumbles the snap from Allen Champagne and falls on it for a loss on the play of a couple. Well, the name of that tune is I Got No Snap from Champagne. Oh. Thrift is in for Texas as we take a look at the total yardage so Ooh. far and what a mismatch that is. Samuels in the backfield for Texas. And he is hammered at about the two. Look at the power of Chris Samuels. 5'11", 196 pound sophomore out of Judson High School. There's a flag, there's right, a at flag the right there. Bottom of that pile. Face mask? Was there a face mask in there? No, no. Ooh, helping the runner. It looked like somebody, Stan Thomas maybe, or Omar Chalet, or Dwayne Miller, somebody got in behind Samuels and tried to help him over the goal line. You almost never see this call. Helping the runner. Offense. Still second down. I, Bill, we've been doing games together six years for home sports now. Let's see who it was. I've never seen this called in a game. There is Samuels right there. Now, who's going to help him? Oh, it was the guy dragging him along. 84 at the bottom of the Texas pile That's, there. Is That's that thrift? Not a thrift, yeah. Who dragged him and pulled him forward. <laughs> <laughs> there are the penalties so far. Texas had a bunch last week. Murdoch across the middle has a man. Metcalf, touchdown, Texas. Ties the Texas record for receptions in a career. Still another well-thrown ball. 
This was a touch pass as Metcalf broke open. It had to be laid over the linebackers and dropped into Metcalf. This ball is well thrown. Murdoch had the patience to wait for him to get open, too, and he did. And Eric Metcalf, a two-point conversion by Texas as we come back to live action. Kerry Cash, one of the Cash twins, takes it in for the two-point conversion. And Texas now leads it 20 to nothing over the Lobos with 440 left to play in the first half. And the, the Texas crowd feeling a little better about itself that they're going to win this game, I don't think was in any question. But just beating New Mexico is not much of a plus for a program. You've got to start looking like you can play with the Arkansas and the Oklahomas and the a and Yeah, they weren't brought here for a close game. No, they weren't brought here to win this game 27-26 on a Wayne Clemens kick at the, at the buzzer. That'd be a loss for these people. Well, Eric Metcalf tied the school record of 85 catches in a career by Johnny Lamb Jones, and he did it in style. He did it with a touchdown. They love it in Austin. Well, for the Aggies off to a slow start this year, and of course A&M not getting to play, because Alabama did not make the trip to College Station. There you see the return men, Myron Ashley back deep for New Mexico. Houston and Baylor winning impressively today, Norm, so you've got a couple of more contenders here in the Southwest Conference, possibly. Myron Ashley takes it on the run at the 10. They're trying to form that wall, and they do, and he gets through to about the 25-yard line, a loose ball. He was down, though. In fact, the kamikaze diver by the University of Texas knocked it out long after Ashley hit the turf. But you're very right. As you take a look on the stats on the scoring drive, Bill, this conference is wide open. It may well have been all the time anyway because uh, A&M has not been an impressive early. But Baylor and Houston, two teams picked for the lower echelon in this conference, are easily the stars of the early season. What two teams normally go to the Cotton Bowl when A&M and Texas don't? Baylor and Houston. That's right. First down, 10 to go, 27-yard line. Leach on the run. He's been on the run all night across the middle, and he was intending it for Al Owens, but Owens was accompanied by Willie Mac Garza. Bill, that ball is rolling dead at the 13-yard line of the Longhorn. <laughs> that ball hit, skipped, and in distance traveled went about 80 yards. <laughs> well, Leach has had his problems tonight. That big Texas rush up front. Oscar Giles, Rocky Allen, Roger Fritcher, the junior from Northbrook, Mark Steed, Ken Hackamack. Yeah, but the guy that's really having trouble is McKay with Giles, yeah, isn't he? That's really a mismatch right now. Oscar Giles is everywhere. Jay Jaquis is now in the game in place of Giles. Here comes a rush again by Texas screen pass. And boy, did they sniff that one out. Beautifully done. Paul Beerman and was right there. And, Bill, New Mexico had this play set up. There was only one guy on that side of the field. This play works for about 20 or 25 yards minimum. Watch, watch the flow here. Texas flows with him. Now, when we pan back the other side, count all the orange jerseys in the screen. One. Boy, Beerman one. had to fight off a block by a big offensive lineman. Oh, that's a nice play by Beerman, who saved the 20, 25-yard gain minimum. Ball on the 22-yard line. Oh, here comes the rush again, and Leach is sacked back inside the 10-yard line. Jay Jaquis out of Littlefield, Texas, was the first one in there, along with Bobby Duncan, Bill. number 46. Leach is taking the snap five yards behind the line of scrimmage, taking a five- or seven-step drop, and he still doesn't have time to look at his primary receiver. Norm, the deepest penetration so far for the New Mexico offense has been its own 28-yard line in this game. Another poor kick by Walsh, but it gets a New Mexico bounce just into Texas territory, and there's a flag all the way back at the 15-yard line. Walsh looking behind him. He knows where it is. There it is. 
So we'll wait and see as Joe Thomas talks it over. Got a hold on uh, New Mexico. Ooh, this might be interesting to make them kick again from about the uh, five-yard line. I think Walsh would like to kick it again. Texas uh, has pretty good field position. I don't know, Bill. Uh, with some of the snaps he's been getting, I'm not so sure Walsh is going to vote for that. He may not have a vote. Got holding on the offense. Holding on the defense. <laughs> Offsetting penalties. Still fourth down. <laughs> Oh, I guess that play was in a holding pattern. Yeah, and David McWilliams is saying, wait a minute, we didn't get the full story on that. Boy, what a competitor he is. What David was doing there was getting the identity of the holder from the referee. Then he pointed out at the player and said, I know you did it. <laughs> well, we're going to do it over. From the 10-yard line, Fourth and a couple of miles needed for the Lobos. Look at how Texas has changed their receiving situation. Instead of split backs, they now have a short and deep though. Yeah, they're going to bring nine people on the rush. Walsh with a great kick this time. Metcalf will get it back on his own 40-yard line. Looking for a block. Bounces off one. Look out, Metcalf. And he's pulled down from behind at the 35-yard line. Boy, he just takes your breath away sometimes, doesn't he? The explosiveness of Eric Metcalf. A lot of people said, well, when he missed his first game, he was hurting for the Heisman, but he's making it up tonight. That was a 50-yard punt. And look at Metcalf bounce around. Can you imagine the number of ways this guy could help a pro team? Kick returns, punt returns, spot back, runner, slot back. Receiver, my goodness. You know who weapon. he reminds me of a lot? Who? Here we go. Murdoch hands to Norris. Gets a couple down to about the 30. Billy White Shoes Johnson, who just signed a contract. But I watched him in his prime dart and dash around, and Metcalf can be every bit as dangerous as you see the time remaining in the first half. By the way, at his age, they've changed the nickname. It's now Gray Shoes. <laughs> I like that. Second down and six. Ball on the 30-yard line. Texas with a 20-nothing lead, trying for more. Offsides at the top of the screen. And that was Charles Cephas, number 78. And I'm sorry I have to mention your name, Charles. You know, offensive linemen, the only time that they get to hear their name on a telecast is usually when they do something bad, Norm. Yeah, they're like a lot like cornerbacks. You say, that guy who's back you see chasing the guy, that's uh, Herb Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, 6'5", 270 pounder out of fur. Look at the yardage so far in this game. New Mexico going the wrong way. My goodness. Minus 25 yards for the first half. Good call. Draw play. Metcalf looking for a hole to go. And he gets back almost to the line of scrimmage. You know, Bill, Metcalf there made a little bit of a mistake. He likes to stop and go. That's one of his favorite moves. That time, if he'd have not stopped but just gone to his right, watch the right here. See, he breaks left. The hole is to the right. He ran right into the... Now he sees there was a little bit of space over there, but it's too late. Steve Daly thought he was out of the play at first, but he was able to come back and make the play, the junior out of San Diego. Double wing here, Metcalf in the slot. Third down, Texas needs 10. Murdoch across the middle, overthrows up. It's income up. Oh, it's intercepted. I thought he'd overthrown everybody, but he Darius Harris was able to reach up. Tony Jones could not get to it, but Harris did. And another interception. For Darius Harris, 111 left to play in the first half. Texas leads by 20. There's 101 left to play in the first half. 
New Mexico now going to try to run out the clock here on the six-yard line. Texas has all three of its timeouts left. Now the officials are going to talk it over, something about the clock. Well, at one end it says 111, and at the other end it says 101. Yeah, I've been fooled a couple of times tonight. Well, the, at one the point, clock at the south end is not uh -huh. right. Well, the clock at the south end end has been right about as often as, uh, oh, shall we say, Jimmy Snyder was on his picks last season on CBS. It's been hit and hope here in the second quarter. Now, which one are we going to believe? I think we're going to take, uh, this being a political year, we're going to take a compromise. We're going to call this 106 to go in the first half, I believe. <laughs> All right. Leach will be under now. Throw out of his end zone. Big Texas rush. Trying to get out of the end zone. He does. He's pursued from behind and tackled at the five. There was Bobby Dump Duncan again. Bobby Duncan and Charles Hunter, number 26. A new position for Hunter this year. At right linebacker, he was a running back the first three seasons. Yes, he was. In fact, Charlie Hunter, number 26, was this club's leading rusher. As a freshman, he gained 717 yards. Timeout. Wait a minute. No, no. I don't believe this. Timeout, New Mexico. Whoa, Bill, we got a story here. 44 seconds left to play in the half. And uh, Mike Shepard will talk it over with his freshman quarterback, Jeremy Leach. Charles Hunter's really an interesting story. 717 yards as a freshman runner for Hunter, number 26. Then Metcalf came in and Norris came in and Hunter got some injuries and Hunter got shuffled. And he's back at linebacker where he was a top-notch high school player. He was very good both ways at Odessa. Recruited heavily by USC, UCLA, and OU. In fact, one of the very prize catches in this state when he was coming out of high school. Well, I think it's a plan of David McWilliams to get all of his good football players on the field and in the right position. Well, Hunter could help him. That's a nice guy to have around. Defensive coordinator Paul Jett, who played here under Darrell Royal in 74, 75, and 6. And there's the big man for Texas, Britt Hager, who's on the sideline. And they've got their nickel backs in the game. Texas does. Second down, needing 11. Hand off by New Mexico to Andre Wooden, who gets a couple over the right side before Paul Bierman brings him down. And it'll bring up third down for New Mexico. Texas started signaling for a timeout with 37 seconds left on the clock. The official spotted it at 31. See, when you're going to do that, you should go to the official before the play and say, hey, if we drag this guy down for a short gain, I'm calling right away. Uh, but that's what happens when you got second and third teamers in on a defense, which is the situation right now with Texas. Remember to stay with us at halftime. The University of Texas Longhorn Band, the show band of the Southwest, will be featured. That is not the Yongo drum from the Olympics. That's Big Bertha. By the way, the guy that replaced Eric Metcalf last week, freshman runner Patrick Wilson, won't play tonight. He has a hip injury that will keep him out. There you saw the stat, both teams with two timeouts remaining. Here's a guy who's seen the cowboy training camp a lot. This is a California Lutheran University graduate, Mike Shepard, the head coach of New Mexico. Sid Gilman helping that passing game out there. Third down, going across the field, and a nice pass to the 20-yard line. And it's going to be enough for the first down. Al Owens, defended by Irish Lewis, the freshman from Dallas Adams, and Owens very smart receiver. He's the veteran working on a freshman, and it showed that time. You know, there are some terrific names in that Texas defensive backfield. Bubba Jakes, Irish Lewis, Willie Mac Garza, Tex Mercer, Bubba Moffitt, Paul Beerman. We got some great names in that secondary. Well, New Mexico called another timeout with first and 10, the ball on the New Mexico 20-yard line. You would almost think that Shepard would like to get out down only 20 points. If he continues to throw the ball down here, something bad could happen. Well, he's got the choice in the second half, so he can get the ball right back at the start of the second half. 
Here's our next Southwest Conference telecast. Boston College will be in Fort Worth to take on the TCU Horn Frogs. Boston College is not going to be in a terribly gentlemanly mood after being beaten today right at the buzzer by a field goal at Penn State 23-20. In fact, that would have been a tie, but Boston College had a punt blocked in the very late going that Penn State took over inside the Boston College 30 to set up that final tiebreaker field goal that beat them. David McAdoo is in there at that middle linebacker spot for Hager. Leach across the middle, and it's knocked away at the 45-yard line. What a collision. Fred Stromile was right there at the point of the attack to knock it loose. That's a guy who lost his starting job after the BYU game, Freddie Stromile. He was supposedly the veteran here. And remember now, this Texas secondary that is the supposed Achilles heel of this club, this has been a strength at Texas for a long time. Realize that in the last 10 years, 15 different Texas defensive backs have played in the National Football League in the last 10 years. I mean, this is the team that produced Bill Bradley and Mossy Cade and Johnny Johnson and Raymond Claiborne and William Graham and Jitter Fields, a bunch of really good players. Second down and 10. 16 seconds left to play, and the pass is completed at about the 24-yard line to the big tight end, John Duff. But also a good job over there by Beerman. And we're going to play it right down to the buzzer with seven seconds to go. New Mexico is going to call their last time out and try it once more. Well, look at the size of Duff. He, <laughs> he towers over Al Owens and the other players at 6'6", 225. A lot of pro scouts like this big fella. Yeah, Duff is a, a very fine prospect. Unrecruited coming out of high school, was hurt a lot in high school. In fact, went to junior college, didn't play at all. Then in his second year of junior college, caught four passes. And Bill was ready to drop out of junior college, had a job, just wanted to get on with his life. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there was a scrimmage film that New Mexico got a hold of, a scrimmage film, not a game, in which he caught eight passes. And New Mexico called and said, would you like a scholarship to come to major college? And, and Duff, I think his first thought was, how in the world did you find me? <laughs> That's how sometimes it happens in this sophisticated world of computers. Bleach going long, and he has a man at the 40 five-yard line, Tony Jones, the other Jones, a senior out of Phoenix. This is the big Tony Jones. And he's just Jones. a little bigger than the Texas Tony Jones. Yeah, this is the huge Tony Jones. This one's 5'6", <laughs> and 5'9", uh, well, 166, yeah. yeah. He towers over the other one, doesn't he? Well, he was quick that time. That's a first down, one second left to play and in the Bill, first half. It, does that put New Mexico in the plus column for yardage in the half? That might. That just might put them in the plus column. Lobos were down about 40 yards. So this should be the last play. Leach going for all of it across the middle, tipped up in the air, dangerous play, and intercepted by Irish Lewis. He's got some blocking. And he brings it back to about the 42-yard line. And that ends the first half. Two interceptions by the Texas defensive secondary. Irish Lewis getting that one. So we have played through a half in Austin. And we go to the locker rooms. The score, Texas 20 and New Mexico nothing. The score at halftime, Texas 20 and New Mexico nothing. The Longhorns jumping out early in the game and leading 10 to nothing after the first quarter. Let's show you some highlights from that first period of play. Down deep in New Mexico territory, Chris Samuels on his first carry of the game was good for six points. And Texas took the lead 10 to nothing. Then back deep was Rick Walsh, the punter for New Mexico, deep in his own end zone, and watch the snap from center. Goes right over his head, out of the end zone for a safety. And Texas now leads 12-zip. 
After a couple of more series, Mark Murdoch, the youngster, comes in, the second-team quarterback. He sees Metcalf across the middle, hits him for the touchdown pass to give Texas the lead. That touchdown reception, also number 85 on the career for Eric Metcalf, to tie him with Johnny Lamb Jones for the most catches in a career at Texas. So David McWilliams, Norm Hitchkiss, has to feel pretty good because his team is leading, although I think most of the fans thought they'd be leading by much more. Yeah, he can't feel too good about the the way they frittered some opportunities to be further ahead. But again, this is a club that was not a very good football team against BYU, quite honestly. And they're looking to get better. They're looking to take advantage of someone. They have a lead. In the coaching terminology, it's something they can build on. This is not a pretty sight no. if you're a New Mexico fan. Realize that in college football, sacks are charged to running yardage. That accounts for the minus 48. In fact, that's exactly the total rushing for Jeremy Leach in the first half. Their leading rusher, Owens, has five yards. Realize, if you want to say something nice about the University of Mexico, look at that Texas total of 148 yards. Texas has snapped the ball 39 times, meaning Texas is gaining only 3.9 yards per play, which is not a very good stat at all. I think New Mexico has done a pretty good job of taking Tony Jones out of the Texas offense. Metcalf has been able to gain some yardage, but for the most part, the Longhorns have not been able to go to Jones and uh, Metcalf out of the backfield very often. But Eric having a good first performance of this season. He has done it all so far. Metcalf in the first half has gained 77 yards and 12 carries, his longest a 19-yard run. And in the pass receiving department, Metcalf has two receptions for 11 yards and a touchdown. He's also had some kick returns for some yardage, and Metcalf right now is in the vicinity of 130, 135 yards all-purpose yardage. Again, he needs a little over 400 yards to take over the career lead in that all-purpose yardage in Texas history. That is Myron Ashley, the deep man for the Lobos, standing right back at the end zone. Wayne Clements will be kicking off for Texas, and he has that wind at his back of about 20 miles per hour from the south. Short. It will be, and it will go out of bounds, and so that means that Texas will have to kick it over. The guy who holds the all-purpose yardage record at the University of Texas just walked to our broadcast position. How are you, Earl Campbell? How's your girlfriend doing, Mr. Bill Warrior? <laughs> just fine, Earl. Tell her I said hello. Well, you, cer you certainly look good, Earl. Taking a lot of Juritol now. <laughs> are you? And if you believe that, there's some swamp land in mid-Texas that he'll sell you. There you are, Earl. Give him a hook of horns right yeah, between us. Yeah. Earl Campbell up here with us. And Earl, of course, the last time we saw you, you were in a hospital bed, and I haven't ever seen you down on your back before. How you well, feel? Now that I got my family here, everything's working out fine. And uh, those people at St. Luke's Hospital are just great. Dr. Poe's and them, they know how to keep you living. How about this Eric Metcalf, Earl? I think he's something else. I think he's a very impressive young man. I really like him. I work with him every day. I know you do, and uh, we're going to see him in, in action a lot more. How's that golf swing, Earl? Well, it's getting better. I don't get to play as much since my family is here. My wife don't like those early Saturday mornings when I pull that four iron and all that out. So I just have to kind of cool it. But I'm doing good. Well, it's good visiting with you. Yes. Always good. Come back and see us next time we're here. Please do. Tell your girlfriend hello for me. <laughs> I'll do it. By, by the way, the scouting report on Earl Campbell's golf game is when he hits one bad, he's got to go a long way to find it. <laughs> he still has about 50 hot dogs coming at Onion Creek, I think. <laughs> Uh, side bet, Bill? Yes. <laughs> Myron Ashley returned that kickoff back to the 29-yard line, so the penalty to the advantage of the Lobos. And we'll get a scouting report here from Earl in just a moment on that Texas offense. Sputtering a little bit. And that defense, there's nothing wrong with that Texas defense. And I'll tell you, Earl, looking at the Texas offense, we're talking about it only 148 yards tonight. Looks like they're in search of a leader right now early in the season. Well, I think about him not having Metcalf last week kind of hurt them. So they're really probably not sure right now. But as long as our defense keep doing what they just did, we'll accept Oscar Giles and those guys anytime. Boy, that Oscar Giles has beefed up. He looks stronger and quicker than last season. He looks like I used to look when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
were you that fast? <laughs> no, I was that young. <laughs> All right, it'll be second down, 16 needed now by the Lobos. Shotgun formation. Here comes the rush again. Leach in a hurry. He gets it off and completes it at the 26-yard line to Al Owens, the speedy wide receiver. But Oscar Giles was right in the face of Jeremy Leach. One of those young player situations. Bierman, the defensive back, was up in the middle linebacker slot. And just as the signal started to be counted, in back of him, Richard hollered for a change in formation. Bierman turned around and said, what? At which point they snapped the ball. Bierman turned around to see the play unfolding in front of him, and quick, you could see him think, where am I supposed to be here? <laughs> Henderson out wide. It'll be third down, 13 needed. Leach across the middle, and it would not have been enough for the first down anyway. Bill, what's happening here is, again, Leach sets up six or seven yards back of the line of scrimmage, takes the snap, drops another six or seven yards. Bill, he threw a 12-yard pass in which the receiver was behind the line of scrimmage when he touched the ball. Rick Walsh has had a big workout tonight. Got twin safeties now, Metcalf along with Willie Mack Garza, and Walsh will get the kickoff. And Garza will take it at the 40. Going to give a lot of ground. Well, he went mostly south, and I think the Texas coaches would rather him go north. Something happened there. Willie Mack looked for Metcalf as though there were some kind of play on. About halfway through the return, he looked back and said, uh, uh, aren't we supposed to be doing a reverse here or something? At which point Metcalf said, hey, you got the ball, pal. I'm out of this one. That was a 33-yard punt by Rick Walsh, and Garza is learning right there <laughs> as he gets the word from David McWilliams to cut it up the field. Well, Shannon Kelly will be back at quarterback for Texas. He started the game. That's a nice move by McWilliams. This is obviously a signal that Kelly is still my quarterback, but he needs to shake Kelly out of his slump. Kelly has plenty of time, gets it to Metcalf. That's always a wise decision by any quarterback, and a gain of eight on the play. And uh, tackle by New Mexico, and that gives Eric Metcalf the record. The career receptions record. One of many records that will fall before that young man finishes this fall. There's the ovation by the Texas crowd. Second down and two. And off to Darren Norris, who gets across the 45-yard line. That's enough for the first down. Musa Kenneke on the tackle, along with Dave Warner. Well, it was good to visit with Earl Campbell, wasn't he? He looks yes. great. Good to see him looking well. Uh, I think everybody was frightened to hear that Earl Campbell was in the hospital um, back a ways. Yeah, that was about uh, almost a month ago. He said a little exhaustion. He was going on... All cylinders. You know, he does a lot of different activities for the University of Texas, attends a lot of meetings, and helps with the students. But he looks great. Tell you what, New Mexico has done a good job shutting off the inside running game of Texas. Play action. Metcalf, midfield, into New Mexico territory. Look out across the 40, 35, run out of bounds at the 32-yard line. A gain of 25 yards for Eric Metcalf. And the yards just pile up for Metcalf. Running and receiving now, he's well over 100 yards. You throw in the return yards, he's up around 170 or 180 all purpose tonight. Watch the movie, make sure you're ready. Put yourself in 45 shoes. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> he didn't even get a hand on him. <laughs> <laughs> that was Philip Vaughn. Now you see it, now you don't. And you can see why an offense would sputter when that man is not in the game. He does so many things well. Draw play. This time, New Mexico had it sniffed out, and it's going to be a holding call on Texas, or at least that's the early indication. New Mexico coming with a blitz. You know, it really puts a lot of pressure on a defense. There's the holding call. When you have Metcalf, as your secondary receiver out in the flat, you almost have to double-team him, don't you? Well, imagine how frightening a Metcalf is to a National Football League linebacker. I mean, project him to the next level. This is a guy 
that if you if you run your play correctly and read the defense correctly, you isolate on a linebacker. Who in the world is capable of covering him? And then in the future, that could open up a lot of territory for Tony Jones and Kevin Nelson yes. and possibly the Texas running game. Kelly, this time he threw it behind Tony Jones. He had Jones going down and out and threw it back to the inside. That's a dangerous throw. Yeah, not a well-thrown ball by Shannon Kelly, who continues to search for his quarterback rhythm. He's now 6 of 11, Norm, for 58 yards. Well, again, you look at the, the passes he's completed, and of the six, five were what you'd call basically dump jobs, three, four, five-yard passes. The only ball he threw of any consequence was about a 12, 13-yard ball to Jorick Battle in the first half in a crossing pattern. Scott Gooch has checked in at right guard for Omar Saleh, who goes out of the game. Third down, 14 needed. Metcalf is the man, gets a block. At the 25, before he's run out of bounds, about three yards shy of a Texas first down. Field goal attempt coming up. Brett Heber and Donald Levingston in on the tackle. Maybe, maybe not. Yes. So Wayne Clements will enter the game again. It's almost as if Texas would rather give the ball to Metcalf than throw when they have a lot of yards. And the stats on Wayne Clements actually they looked at the film and found out that that third field goal by Clemens had been touched at the line of scrimmage by BYU, so they count him as two for two for last week. With a block. Poor snap blocked there again. Poor snap from center. Boy, and the, you know, you can hear the Texas crowd because on the one hand, they know they're going to get a win, but on the other hand, this is a very intelligent crowd. These people are used to very good football, and they know that this type of football isn't going to beat an OU a few weeks down the road, or an Arkansas, or an M, or even maybe the way Baylor and Houston are playing now. Jimmy Marshall on the block. Tal Elliott with the high snap for Texas. Mark Murdoch looked like he wanted to run with the ball at first, Norm, and then he tried to put it down on the tee from a standing position, and it was blocked by New Mexico. So some early mistakes by the Longhorns. But we saw this last year. Texas did not get going till the third game of the season. Well, and the schedule gives them that opportunity again, doesn't it? The, the only real looming situation is, of course, the early October date with Oklahoma. Though, the way North Texas stung Texas Tech, don't count on this being a freebie. Watch Murdoch have to go high now. Elliott, now he says, well, I'll put it down. <laughs> He wasn't even down. You know, actually, he did a good job of setting up a pretty good hole there, didn't he? Yep. Now, if you're sitting in the north end zone here at Texas, this is what you saw. And you say to yourself immediately, Harriet, I don't think that's good. <laughs> well, if you're keeping track of Metcalf on the all-purpose yardage gain tonight, he has carried the ball 14 times for 84 yards. He has caught it four times for 43. And he has three returns for 66 yards. What does that come out 153. to? 153. And no. off to Wooden. Around the left side. He's got 10 yards. Make it 12 before he's ridden out of bounds by Stanley Richard. 183 it comes out to for uh, Metcalf. And that's the first rushing first down by New Mexico tonight. And it isn't like they've gathered a whole bunch of passing first downs either. Andre Wooden, 5'11", 180-pound junior out of Bellflower, California. Which was also the home of another athlete. Do you remember Bellflower, California? Jerry Corey was the Bellflower bomber. <laughs> he got bombed a lot, too. Yes, he did. The boxer, heavyweight contender. Al Owens gets the reception right across the 45 to the 46. Bubba Jakes was standing right on him, but a nice throw by Leach. He threw it down and low where Owens could go get it, and it was a gain of eight on the play. And I guess you'd have to call this already New Mexico's best drive of the game. I was just getting ready to say this is a sustained drive if you're a Lobo fan. again cuts off left tackle and he's right at the yardage necessary for the first down Lee Brockman did a good job of knifing in along with Oscar Giles 
And what do you think? He's about a half yard short? Yeah, I'd put in a half maybe. Right in there, in comes the defense for Texas. They go back to a four down lineman look. Now, if you've got an exotic, if you're New Mexico and you've got an exotic, that is a, a halfback throw, uh, something unusual throw back to the quarterback, and those plays are in their playbook, this is maybe where you use it. Bread and butter run, and it's a first down. Wooden does a good job of pulling his way to the 46 before Stanley Richard makes the tackle. Another first down for the Lobos. You know, Bill, you see New Mexico run the ball pretty well on this play, and maybe it's just that Texas has gotten so conditioned to the pass that the run is now open. But you sort of go back to the start of this game and you say to yourself, why the shotgun? Why the panic early? Why not try to at least make Texas think you can run the ball a little bit? Because now New Mexico's moving the ball pretty well. Well, the Longhorns have let the Lobo stay in this game. Tight formation. Good one to throw out of. Oh. Oh. Well, that didn't fool Rocky Allen. <laughs> he looked like he came out of the Lobo huddle. 6'3", 256-pound junior out of Brownwood, and there's a flag back in the defensive backfield of Texas. Strange place for a flag. It's a clip, apparently, against New Mexico. Yes. Yeah, got to take that major on first down. Let's see if we can see the clip. Now, it's going to happen right in front of that official. See if we see somebody come from the side. All I could see was Bodies. orange jerseys. Nothing there that we saw, but this is a whopper. In fact, Bill, Bites. we have just seen... Billy, they just marked off 16 and a half yards on that play. Apparently, That's a dead ball foul, huh? Dead ball clip. There's That's what it is, ball. and second down and 27 now. And a good job by Tex Mercer, number three, a senior out of Springtown, coming up on Scott Howard in a hurry. So Mercer looked like Howard had a lot of daylight, and then Mercer came out of nowhere tell you what you go back up oh, there's another flag back there you go back to that last penalty bill that's a bummer a 15 yard dead ball because you lose the down and you lose the 15 yard exactly and now there's another flag it looks like mike henderson of new mexico may have said or done something to one of the texas players after the the ball was dead here let's listen Personal foul. Well, we'll watch so, this time. We'll listen next time. We have a dead ball. Personal dead foul. Ball. Uh oh, dead Five ball again. Third down. So they lose the down again and lose 15 yards. Here we are. Good okay. camera work, guys. We're going to see this one. A little, little shove there. Whoops. Whoop. What happened there? Oh, hello. Not nice. Not nice. Bubba Jakes getting it on with Mike Henderson, and Henderson got caught. That push occurring after the play, so what we've got now is... Third down in a couple of time zones is what we have. Ball on the 28-yard line. Leach going for all of it on one play, and he had a man out there. Ball tipped up in the air intended for Tony Jones at the 40-yard line. Bill? He almost got that. It was messed up by Mark Berry. Do you realize if he'd have caught that bomb, he still wouldn't have had a first down? He still would have been five yards short. Stanley Richard comes off the field. He was also in the vicinity. In fact, Bill, Walsh is going to have to exceed his average tonight to punt to the first down stick. <laughs> and waiting for it is Willie Mac Garza. And he punts it out of bounds. He won't even get it back to the original line of scrimmage as the ball goes out of bounds right around midfield. So the Longhorns continue to apply the defensive pressure and lead by 20 with 8.51 left to play in the third. Correction, we have been saying that. Kelly throws across the middle and it's complete to Nelson or did he drop the ball? I think he dropped it. Kevin Nelson had it at the 35 yard line and boy was he jolted by Steve Webster and Jimmy Marshall. Boy, they did a sandwich job on Kevin Nelson. 
who had the red shirt last season with a broken collarbone, and he'd been injured in the early workouts this year, Norm, so he's not accustomed to that heavy traffic in the middle, and that time he dropped it right at the point of contact. We've talked about the terrific runners. Here's another one displaced by Metcalf and Norris. Yeah. Nelson was a good runner as a freshman, over 400 yards, but there's no room in the backfield with Metcalf and Norris there. Well, Kelly Keats, he had no other alternative. He was tackled in the backfield by Musa Kanucky. Or Kanucky. Musa's got a right to be proud on the team playing home tonight. He's played pretty well. 6'3", 254-pounder, a senior out of Pasadena, California. That last pass to Nelson was the best thrown ball by Shannon Kelly tonight. Boy, he hit Nelson right on the button, about 30 yards downfield. And it'll bring up third and 11 now. The ball on the Texas 44-yard line. 8-0-9, left to play in the third. Kelly with time. Going long, Metcalf. Metcalf at the 20, and he's tripped and goes down at the 13-yard line. Oh, that Eric Metcalf. What a nicely thrown ball by Shannon Kelly, though. Finally, a ball right on the money from Kelly. This ball is thrown with touch and with pace. And Art Martinez makes the touchdown saving tackle as he just trips up Metcalf right there. Just got a clip of the heel. And Metcalf now goes over 200 yards all purpose this evening. So that means he's only 200 and change away from breaking Earl Campbell's all purpose yardage record. Here's the screen pass out to Walker inside the 10. Gets a great block out there by Kerry Cash at about the 5. And there's a flag back on the 12. Darius Harris made the tackle. Let's see what the call is. It's going to be against Texas. Illegal procedure. Now, David McWilliams, boy, you know he's frustrated right now as he's talking to John Mize, his offensive coordinator. Offense, still first down. I believe what happened there, Bill, was the man in motion cut up field early, was headed toward the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. Stephen Clark comes into the game. He'll be a tight end, so it'll be Clark, Walker, and Jones. Pretty good spot right here for some kind of a sprint draw effect. Texas likes this play around the goal line in passing situations. Metcalf. Whoa. Boy, good rush in the backfield put on by New Mexico. That was Steve Daly, number 87, came crashing in, along with Cooper, number 27. And just when Texas looks like they're threatening, the ball starts to go back the other way. Dynamite rush off the corner there by Cooper, who really messed that play up to strong safety. Devin Cooper out of Linwood, California. Second down and 18. Kelly. He really didn't have much territory to run with. Art Martinez came up in a hurry to cut off any yardage that Kelly could get, and so the line of scrimmage will be right at the 17-yard line, and it'll be third down now, and Texas needs 15. Bill, if I'm not mistaken, though, this is the sixth or seventh time Texas has been inside the New Mexico 30. Texas has to go inside the three for a first down. Darren Norris on the draw play. Inside the 15 to the 14. And New Mexico shuts them off again. John and Bell. Here comes another field goal attempt. Bell and Devin Cooper did a good job of closing in on Norris. So it will be Wayne Clements. This can't be making the Texas offensive staff very happy. Uh, this is a team that allowed 34 to New Mexico State last week and 68 to Fresno State the week before. And it's messed up again. Another bad snap. Clemens has to run with it. He never likes to do that. And New Mexico forces another Texas mistake, or should I say it's just a mistake by Texas. Yeah, that one wasn't forced at all. That was a give. 
Well, Tal Elliott having some trouble with that deep snap. Murdoch had no chance. That ball hit the ground before it got to him. That's a wild pitch, not a pass ball by any means. Clement says, oh, my. Ball bouncing loose in there. So the Longhorns, even though they have 232 all-purpose yards from Eric Metcalf tonight, only have 20 points on the board. David McWilliams, well, you could fry an egg on his neck right now, huh? Well, let's go back in time after this play. We'll talk about the New Mexico defense and the type of points they've yielded. First down and 10, the ball on the Lobo 24-yard line. Ooh. It's like a fire drill back there. Jeremy Leach in the pocket. Humble. Who's going to get it? Scramble, Texas. At the 22-yard line, Dwayne Duncan. Lee Brockman, though, was the big man on the play. There he is, number 63, congratulating Duncan. Brockman came crashing in from his left linebacker position. Dwayne Duncan is, by 18 months, the younger brother of Bobby Duncan. Leach, with little or no time again, starts to draw it back and then gets smacked. The ball pops out of there, and all Duncan has to do is belly flop on it. Boy, Brockman at 6'2", 225, really gives the Longhorns another weapon defensively, and it's been a real big night for the Duncan brothers. First and 10, Kelly. Little down and out to Nelson, and it's good for an eight-yard gain. Knocked out of bounds by Darius Harris. Let's go to that New Mexico defensive record. 34 points allowed last week to Mexico State. 68 the week before to Fresno. Now starting backwards with the results last year. 43 to Arkansas, 53 to San Diego State, 73 to Air Force, 59 to Wyoming, 34 to UTEP, 35 to Colorado State, 41 to Hawaii, 45 to BYU. You get the picture, Billy. A little porous, huh? Look at the jumping ability of Eric Metcalf as he tippy toes his way inside the 10 to about the 7. Yeah, this club, if you track them back to early last season, none of their last 10 opponents have been held under 34 points. But Norm, that Arkansas game, they almost won it. Yes, they really had Arkansas sweating, didn't they? Yeah, right down into almost halfway through the fourth period. Mike Shepard has to be very proud of his team tonight, although Texas has shot itself in the foot several times. First and goal from the eight-yard line. Power straight ahead, Metcalf. And he's down to about the two-yard line. Big box up front. Number 54, Alan Champagne. With a big block down there, along with Omar Saleh and Stan Thomas, the right side of that Texas line. Boy, look at Metcalf tonight. He wow. has been busy. Well, if he'd have missed this game, where would you think Texas offense would be? Tell you what, if they lead him in long enough, he might break girls' record tonight. Samuels comes in now to make it a full backfield. He's going outside. He's gone. Touchdown, Texas. Eric the Great with six more. And Texas cashes a turnover. And on their eighth penetration inside the New Mexico 30, they cash a third touch. Norm, you can count on one hand the number of backs able to start into the middle of the line and veer back out to the outside. You well, just don't see that coach. And, and Bill, if you can count on two hands if you count pro football, too. <laughs> That's right. You know, you throw all the backs on North America, maybe on two hands that can make that move. You're right. Well, there was a whistle before the kick. Oh, wait a minute. Your timeout? New Mexico wants to huddle and discuss stopping this extra point. Well, there's a new rule this year about Locked. the extra point. And so it's every bit as big a play now. It used to be just a play that was a necessity. It's just necessary to run it. Well, this was the only play in a game on which only one team could score. That's right. Now that's been changed. The defense can score on this play. If they intercept the ball and run at the length of the field, that's two points. 
if they catch a fumble in the air or block a kick and pick it up and run it at two points. I think it's the most ridiculous rule I've ever heard of. Well, Bill, you know what some of the coaches worry about? We're going to get into lateral situations. Flipping the ball around, guys running all over the place, and you're going to get some people hurt on these plays because they'll get so wild at the end of them. That's the worry. Well, that's the first time out used here in the second half. Four minutes left to play in the third period. Texas up 26 0. Clemens that's will try to make it 27. Good snap that time. It's good. Four minutes left to play in the third period from Austin. Texas 27, New Mexico nothing. We hope you're enjoying college football on HSE. Here we go with the uh, Longhorn touchdown. You're going to see some acceleration from Eric Metcalf. Boy, do you ever. Look at the way he swings outside. He was able to suck in the New Mexico defense and just simply outruns Jimmy Marshall to the fly. Yeah, it's not Jimmy's fault. Jimmy can pick him up and go. Yeah. Metcalf with two touchdowns tonight. The drive. Four plays, only 23 yards. And Texas leading it now by 27. Now, when you look at the scores today, can you believe that Michigan lost that football game to Miami? Oh, Lee Cow. Huh? And some of the others. How do you think the folks in Iowa, projected by some as a preseason national champion field, but being beaten at home by Colorado? Good kick by Clements, and Myron Ashley takes it all the way back, kneels down, and the Lobos will get it on the 20. Well, so far tonight, if you're an Eric Metcalf watcher, he's 248 yards total offense. Metcalf with 248 yards, New Mexico with 47. Wow. That's the total yardage. Hmm. First down and 10 for the Lobos. Bruton with a handoff, and he gets a couple. Tex Mercer. Starting to see some of the second liners in there. You got to know that come the fourth quarter, now that the lead is swelled to four scores, that Dave McWilliams will play just about everybody down the last 15 minutes of this game. Now you're seeing a lot of David McAdoo, number 62. He's the big middle linebacker. Keep an eye on him. And giving him some playing time for when Hager leaves. Big rush. Leach can't get away at the five-yard line. Another sack by Texas. On the run, McGrath. No, not McGrath. But it's a 67 Rhodes. Roger Frischer. Boy, there's one of those big fresh junior. That's Fritcher out of Northbrook. 6'6", six, six, all 276 pounds. You know, the one thing you worry about, Bill, with a kid like Leach, who's a really good player, and there's going to be a penalty here against Texas. One thing you worry about with a guy like Leach is by the time you get enough people around him to be a decent football team, how shell-shocked might he be from beatings like this? I'll tell you one thing. Lately, Leach, when he gets the snap from center, he's not looking upfield for a receiver. He's looking at the orange jerseys. You're right. He's really taking a beating tonight on third and nine. That was an unsportsmanlike conduct against Rhodes. Rush. Tackle. Another sack. This time, it's Patton, number 92. James Patton. 6'3", 257-pound freshman from League City, Texas. 
And look who the cheerleader is, the biggest cheerleader in the nation. Hager, the only starting senior. He probably won't see any more action tonight as the Horns go with younger and younger second and third line players. Texas Norms, we see the punt here by Rick Walsh. Longhorns will let it die, and it takes oh, a Texas my. bounce inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Ooh, there was a Texas player who got in the middle of that, Bill, and I think touched the ball and then had to go get it. Yes, indeed. What did he recover it yes. for? I don't know. It was the defensive back, James, James. Lee. <laughs> Out of Plano, Texas. Who got in the middle of that whole thing and suddenly <laughs> said to himself, I better get on that ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, this telecast is authorized under rights granted to Home Sports Entertainment and is not intended for the commercial use of our viewing audience. Any reproduction or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of Home Sports Entertainment and the University of Texas is prohibited. Well, the Longhorns did have one of the better recruiting years of any of the teams in the nation last year and David McWilliams would like to redshirt as many as possible but it, three or four are going to see a lot of action Metcalf certainly not a redshirt inside the 25 runs out of bounds at the 24 yard line a gain of about 12 on the play for Eric Metcalf Lamont Everett runs him out of bounds I don't believe if Eric Metcalf were anything but a Heisman Trophy candidate, that you'd see him getting the ball in this situation. If you'll notice, the other Texas starters, key players, are starting to get more and more time on the bench. Hager hasn't been in for a few series now. But Metcalf, if he's going to get mentioned for that, has got to get numbers. I'll tell you, Cephas was out in front of him. Texas pulled that interior line. Look at Metcalf shake off a couple of tacklers inside oh, the 20. Geez. What a move! But a flag is down back at the 20, and it may be wiped out. What a run by Metcalf. Oh, it's against Texas. They're going to wipe it out. Oh, that's a shame. You're still going to see this piece of footage used <laughs> whenever they talk about the gifts of Eric Metcalf. I know it's going down in the HSE files tonight. Look, how, how many Lobos touch him? Here's, Here's one. one. Two. Here's two. He looks like he's headed out of bounds there. Three, Three four, five, six, seven. You know, another interesting point here, Norm, to bring up after this run. Last year, Eric was brought down a lot of times with one-hand tackles. And finally, David McWilliams started handing him the ball in the third game and making him tougher. And by the end of the season, he became a tough runner. He is some player. Picked up where he left off last year, that's for sure. Kelly, that little out pattern, and it's complete. Nice job by Tony Jones of staying in bounds. Boy, Bill, this play is an exceptional reception. Uh, Jones kept his feet in bounds as he was falling backward and making the reception. This is an outstanding catch by Jones. And when you keep in mind that he's no slouch at the 100 and 200 meters either, having run a 10-2 in the 100 and a 20.28 in the 200 meters. So Jones can fly. Kelly the Norris, he gets a little running room. Good stiff arm. And at the 20-yard line, he's run out of bounds. He'll still be a couple of yards shy of the first. John Bell, the defensive man for the Lobos, with 142 left to play in the third period. By now to the New Mexico defense, this must start to feel like an endless game. Norris, 15 for 33 yards. Not much of a night for Norris. They've kept him pretty well bottled up on the inside plays. Third down, Texas needs seven. Metcalf again, big hole middle, look out. Touchdown, Metcalf and Texas. You just can't keep him out of the end zone. Boy. Well, it was a great delay move. Kelly did a good job of faking. Metcalf had some big holes to run through. Alan Champagne, Dwayne Miller, Chad McMillan, Omar Saleh, they blocked New Mexico right out of there. 
And Wayne Clemens will attempt the extra point. So, with 1.36 left to play in the third period, it's been the Eric Metcalf show to open the 1988 football campaign. Texas 34, the Lobos nothing. But what a highlight film for Eric Metcalf. A nice coming out party. Yes, it's been, as Metcalf now approaches 300 yards total offense. Metcalf has run for 133 yards on 21 carries. He has three touchdowns and 285 yards. That's not bad. Now what you wonder is, does David McWilliams leave him in the game, pile up more numbers, and take a chance on injury? You'd love to get the kid more consideration for the Heisman, and to do so, you need outrageous numbers. And Bill, just in general, here's one of the distasteful things about college football, that there's so much hype now about the Heisman that players all over the country in games like this are being perhaps overused to try to put numbers on the board. Yeah, I think Eric feels like he needs an extra game in oh, one. No question. That, that, isn't, that isn't to say anything negative about, about David at all. We're talking just about a general trend in college football. Yep. Again, the kick down in the end zone, so the Lobos will get it back out on the 20. Watch this from the end zone again, and watch the big holes. Look at Champagne and Soleil. Good kick out block, too. Watch him dart right here. Stumbles, then he turns it on. He sees daylight. Patrick McFarlane with a good block, too. The senior out of van. There's the scoring drive. Of course, uh, in case you were out of the country and did not hear, the reason that Metcalf had to sit out the BYU game is he was given a sum of money to enter summer school. He decided to long jump instead. Oh, didn't repay it back in time, and that was the penalty. And Leach had to die for his life. There was Lee Brockman again, and Paul Moriarty came in there. Now, here's an interesting number, number 61. Watch Moriarty. He's a freshman, a pure freshman out of Conroe. 6'6", 270 pounds, and runs a 4'8'40", and he was all-state defensively as well as offensively. Well, and his buddy Willie Mac Garza was an all-state defensive back. Uh, Texas had some really nice recruits. Uh, and as you said, David McWilliams would love to redshirt some, but he doesn't have a deep Texas team this year. A lot of these freshmen are going to have to play, especially in the event of injuries down the line. I don't think it would bother him to play Moriarty. No. And uh, Tommy Jeter is another one. Leach heads for the sidelines, and he doesn't look well. And you can imagine with the pounding he's taken. We're into double digits in sacks by now, I would think, for Texas. Eight. Eight. It must seem like 80 to Leach. Well, you know, when you're going to throw the ball, you brought this up earlier. Without establishing any kind of a running game at all, you can just get in the starting blocks if you're a Texas defensive lineman, and that's what they've done, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the Texas defense set the tone early here. The and, and, you know, we've talked about how the Texas offense has struggled to cash opportunities, Bill. Now let's go to the other side of this. This is a New Mexico team that scored 36 points last week and 21 the week before. To so completely cork them up is an impressive evening for a Texas defense that really needed to impress after the BYU game. Second down and 19. It must look like 119 yards for a first by Leach. Draw play. Good call. Across the 15, across the 20, to the 25-yard line goes Willie Owens. 5'10 senior. Nice run for Owens. And he gets about 15 of those yards back. So it'll be third down and five for the Lobos. His backup quarterback, Ed Larson, giving the signal. I have a feeling I know which one is dummy and which one is it. When Larson starts signaling, and about five or ten seconds later, the other guy jumps in and makes three or four hurried signals, I have a feeling Larson's the hot one. How about you, Bill? Look at that stat. Oh. Boy, how do you think Leach feels now? 
Think he knows they're coming after him? Uh, did he beat the <laughs> clock? <laughs> did you see the whistles blew and the guy kept coming? Leach said, no, 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 don't hit. Me. Yep, delay of the game. Slater couldn't get the snap off fast enough. And I think Leach was relieved that he didn't. And Bill, take a look at the flags on a night that that as as late as yesterday afternoon we were told was going to be a horrendous night with downpours and thunderstorms and big wind. It is almost calm here, a very lilting, maybe five mile an hour breeze on a beautiful mid-Texas fall evening. If you're a Texan, you have to count your blessings tonight that Hurricane Gilbert decided to go elsewhere. Well, that's the end of the third period from Austin, Texas. It's all Longhorns, 34 to nothing over New Mexico. enjoying college football on HSE, the University of Texas leading New Mexico, and the Longhorn offense has sputtered at times tonight, although you wouldn't know it in case you joined us late, but that Texas defense has put incredible pressure on Jeremy Leach, the young freshman quarterback for the Lobos. We just got word, by the way, Kevin Nelson is not going to play the rest of the game. He's out with a sore shoulder. Yeah, he's had a fractured collarbone. Oh! The footsteps Willie Owens heard were Dwayne Duncan's. He was clippity clopping along, and Mr. Owens decided he didn't want any part of that ball, and I don't blame him. Tell you what, look at the pads on Duncan. He looks like Robocop, doesn't he? <laughs> Got huge thigh pads on. He clocked the receiver. Rick. Meanwhile, how nervous is this guy? Well, how many times has he punted? His foot's about to fall off. Rick Walsh with another punt, and he gets a good one away, and it'll drive Samuels to the 30-yard line. He stepped out of bounds. As soon as he caught it, he stepped out of bounds at the 30, so a very effective kick for Rick Walsh. It'll be about a 50-yarder. Well, we have our answer on whether or not we're going to see Eric Metcalf the rest of the night, and the answer is no. Samuels stays in the game. We've seen the last of Eric who finishes with just under 300 total yards all purpose. And we got Murdoch, a new quarterback in. Chris Samuels is in. Johnny Walker's in at one wide receiver. This uh, looks like the uh, second team in Toto. Oh, I think so. Except for little Tony Jones, who's still out there. Tony needs some more catches. The running backs are uh, Cockrell and Samuels. We pass out into the flat. Nice, nice move by Dion Cockrell, a 6'1", 196-pounder. Sophomore out of San Antonio Cole, one of the real blue chippers coming out of San Antonio a couple of years ago. And he's also, as you saw right there, a very good receiver coming out of the backfield. This club's got a bunch of good players <laughs> that you won't see at all except in situations like this bill because there's such strength that the skill positions on this team this team johnny walker and the cash brothers and cockerel and samuels are really nice players who really come into their own next year cockerel again uh, up over the 42 yard line that'll be good for a first down well check yeah hook them horns a couple of young fans here in austin well, Eric Metcalf is through for the evening, Norm, with 285 yards total offense, 133 yards rushing, 86 receiving, 66 yards on returns, and three touchdowns. That's a career work for some backs. Clock ticking off at 13.45. First down in 10, Texas. And off goes to Samuels. Right at midfield. I was dancing through the playbook today for the Texas Longhorns. You know, this team has on its roster 10 players who rushed 
for a thousand yards in a high school season. My goodness. They got him playing linebacker, wide receiver, defensive back. They're scattered all over this team. That's probably the Metcalf rule. You can't get ahead of him. You got to play somewhere. Second down and four. Samuels, nice cutback. Look at the speed. Chris Samuels, nice move. Philip Vaughn made the tackle along with Steve Webster for New Mexico. Phil Vaughn was part of a, an interesting, rather sad story last year. Um, Phil Vaughn was driving to the uh, airport to return to camp last year when he was involved in a major auto accident. His dad died of injuries, suffered in that accident. There's now a court case involving that auto accident. Vaughn, redshirted last year, has healed in time to come back and play for New Mexico this year. It's an amazing story. Handoff, first man through, that's Dion Cockrell. He carries a lot of people with him inside the 40-yard line. John Bell, one of those people. So now Cockrell and Samuels getting a chance to work in the back for you. Texas alumni band here. They always kick off the first home game for Texas. 25 years the alumni band has been gathering. Second down, needing two. Samuels again with some good blocks, and he's inside the 35-yard line. That's enough yardage for a first down. Art Martinez in on the tackle for the Lobos. Another first down for Texas. At this point of the game, you always have that difficult situation if you're the coach ahead. How much do you try to score? How much when you send plays in, do you try to get another touchdown? You don't want to embarrass Mike Shepard. His kids have played very well, especially defensively tonight, although I'll, I'll be it out, man. But you can't tell your second and third team don't score. Either. No, they got girlfriends in the stand. Yes, they do. And mamas and papas. And they have kids back at their high schools who can play. <laughs> That's right. And when they go back to San Antonio or Referio or Odessa, they want to be able to say, hey, I played last week. I got 28 yards rushing against New Mexico. I was on HSE. Plus, if David McWilliams may find him somebody in there who can help him out later in the season. Well, injuries do happen, don't they? Yes, they do. Mark Simmelman checks into the game. Samuels goes in motion, draw play. Cockrell at the 20, needs a block, inside the 10. He's going to score, but don't get too excited. There's a flag on the play back at the 35-yard line, and I think it might be a penalty, another penalty on Texas holding. Yeah, holding interior line on Texas. The Longhorns have got to be running out of bullets or feet. They have shot themselves a bunch of times tonight. The way Chad Dix McMillan reacted, I wonder if it's on him. Please, if it is, especially don't have his dad come after me, Ernie. Second <laughs> down. <laughs> but it was thrown from the official standing directly behind the defensive line. Take a look now. It'll happen down to the lower half here. There's the hole right there. It's on Texas. Uh, Gooch. Scott Gooch. He's a freshman out of Bridge City. 64. You're going to see him on the right side. Now watch Gooch. Up he comes. Arms get extended. There the arm drops down. See him get around the waist. There it is. Good shot by our camera crew. Nicely done. Nice pass. Johnny Walker. And he gets down to the 21-yard line. Murdoch fired that ball in there. Walker with a good move. Devin Cooper on the tackle. Johnny Walker, a sophomore out of San Antonio Holmes. Boy, when Walker and the Cash brothers came over from San Antonio, Holmes lost a lot of offense in one year, didn't they? Well, and don't forget that at the same time, Texas uh, also attracted Deion Cockrell. That's right. Out of that city. That whole city lost a lot of offense to the <laughs> Longhorns. That's San Antonio offensive-minded high school football teams over there. Samuels, right over left guard, gets a couple. 
Rick Tiedemann came in to tackle, uh, to make the tackle for the Lobos. 10.55, there's the time remaining in this game. It's been all Texas, 34 to nothing. Second down, Texas needs seven. There's some of the crowd tonight. They were expecting about 55,000. That could have fluctuated a little bit. A lot of folks deciding not to come over because of the possible hurricane. By the way, add Samuels that they got out of San Antonio also, who's the sophomore. Nice job. Yeah, Samuels, great move. Got one man to beat. Gets to the five-yard line. Wow. This is a little preview of what the Longhorns may have in store for you for the next two or three years. Well, again, we've talked at times about Texas groping to find itself, but this is very much an underclassman team. They start only one senior on defense. They start five seniors on offense, but a number of those players are sort of split time type players also. Very young Texas team. Boy, do they have talent at the skill positions. Quick. Timeout now called on the field by New Mexico with 10.06 left to play in the game. So the Longhorns. I think that defense for New Mexico is just exhausted, Norm. They've got to be. And we are too, so we'll take a break right here on HSE and come back with the final 10.06 in just a moment. 10.06 left to play in the fourth period. The Texas Longhorns trying to push it into the end zone, already leading 34 to nothing. I don't believe it. Is that Alan Champagne still out there? Yeah, the Todd Smith is, is his backup. possible? It is. Alan Champagne, a senior three letterman starting center from Houston. A lot of fine linemen have come out of Cypress Creek. Alan, one of them. And uh, they're saying that he should be the all Southwest Conference center this year. He's got some good credentials. First and goal from the five for Texas. Samuels on the flip. Oh, look at that power running. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Texas. What a second effort by Chris Samuels. And that's his second touchdown of the evening. Well, rest assured that when Eric Metcalf trucks on to the six-figure world of the NFL, this club will not be bare of cupboard at running back. <laughs> no, sir. Not, in, not at all. And, of course, we haven't seen Patrick Wilson, who's a little bunged up tonight, yeah, but or this, Eric Williams. But, and, and Patrick Williams, Wilson started last week instead of Metcalf. In other words, the coaches put him in there instead of Samuels or Huntley. Samuels, 42 yards on eight rushing attempts tonight. The kick by Clements is good, and Texas has taken a 41 to nothing lead, and some tempers flare at the five-yard line. I didn't think New Mexico had enough energy left to fight. Well, these are special teams. Oh. Look at Alan Champagne. He's still out He's there. He's still in there. <laughs> and he doesn't snap. Come on, Alan. <laughs> and he doesn't snap, does he? No, I don't believe he... Well, he doesn't snap on the special team. That's right. Let's see what we got here. Uh, uh, Joe wants to sort this out a little more. Well, they're... <laughs> it's okay. Who's it against now? What do you got? Here comes Joe. We have dead ball. Offsetting. Personal fouls. Oh, that means they're both thrown out of the game. I think Alan... I wonder if it's Alan Champagne. Think he's tired? Well, Dave Warner's got to be tired. There's the redhead. Talking it over with one of Mike Shepard's coaches on the sideline. Warner has been in for a lot of snaps tonight. 6'4", 230-pound junior. He's a veteran it, nose guard. It's possible Warner got a kick from Champagne. <laughs> well, he's out of here. Popping off again. 10 one left to play. Let's hurry and get this one over with. At this time of the night, Bill, you know, you, 
once you run down, the number of notes you have left in the game are dwindling down to a few here. I have to be honest with you, I haven't researched some of these fourth team defensive backs as thoroughly as I should have. How about you? Well, I, I went pretty deep. I've got a lot of numbers down here. 41 nothing. Bill, look down here. Take a look right down in front of our broadcast position. There is a young lady with a portable TV. Bill, what in the world could she be watching on TV at this time of night? And this game isn't on. It's being delayed. Oh, well, the Olympics, maybe. Exactly. Maybe she's watching the Olympics. She knew this was going to be a bad game. There are all sorts of people warming up. Donovan Forbes is warming up, along with Keith Cash. And Donovan Forbes is the third team quarterback here. Again, they would prefer, I believe, to redshirt Jason Burleson, the, the fourth team quarterback, technically, I guess you'd have to say. Boy, it's Burleson a load. And Peter Gardier, too, the youngster out of yes. Houston Lee, is very highly thought of. Set a lot of Houston high school passing records. Clements. Ashley at the 25-yard line. Myron Ashley, and a flag comes in late. And another flag. This game's breaking down on us. And a clip, and New Mexico is going to start back in the shadow of their own posts again. Well, I... This is more than a baptism of fire for a freshman quarterback, isn't it? If this is baptism, he's drowning. <laughs> there are the penalties so far, and games that get out of hand like this, you'll see a lot of penalties in that situation. I know David McWilliams would like to cut down on those. So you back up New Mexico to the 12-yard line, first and 10. 41 zip, Texas with 9.55 left to play. Myron Ashley flanks out to the right. Now he comes in motion. Across the 20 yard line. Willie Owens on the reception. Gain of about seven. Lucky now in the game and middle linebacker. Texas running in a lot of substitutes. Texas next week comes right back to this stadium. Same time, same place. North Texas comes here. Then they travel to Rice and then play OU. Running play, first down. And then the rest of their Southwest Conference schedule. Willie Owens on the carry for the first down for New Mexico. David McWilliams. Played linebacker and center for Darrell Royal on the 1963 National Championship Texas team. One year at Texas Tech. This is his second season at Texas. Again, Willie Owens on the carry. Gets about two. For New Mexico, next week they encounter the Akron Zips being coached by former Notre Dame coach Jerry Faust. And then it's back into whack play for the Lobos, October 1st against the Air Force. Did the Air Force get to triple figures against Northwestern today? They could have. They, they were up there in a hurry. They were into the 50s in the third quarter today against Northwestern. Almost as many sacks as completions for Leach. There's his big tight end, John Duff. David McAdoo, Bubba Moffitt, Brad Lucky, James Lee, all in on the tackle. There are not many wins left on the New Mexico schedule. Past Akron, Air Force, Utah, Wyoming, that's an improved club. UTEP, that's an improved club. BYU and Hawaii, Hawaii, a sound club that beat Iowa. Then Colorado State and San Diego State. If they don't beat Akron, you could envision a one in 10 season for this team, couldn't you, Bill? Mm. 
Lucky they got that one win early. Huh? Yes. Jeremy Leach hanging in there tough across the middle and complete to Scott Howard. Howard tackled by Higgins. Seven thirty six left to play in the game. Tell you what, you got to admire this kid Leach. He's a game puppy, isn't he? Yep. For the pounding he's taken. Here comes some rain. Yeah, the rain, just sheets of rain coming across the stadium. That's a good shot of it. Well, they expected rain all today and early tonight in this game, and they're getting it late. Long pass downfield, almost underthrown, and Tory Brown did a good job of coming back, but Fred Stromile was right with him. It's a little bit of a come down for Fred Stromile, a starter against BYU, who was demoted and now playing what amounts to the happy hour time. Well, Bubba Jakes did a pretty good job tonight. He yep. was the backup to Stromile. Beerman, Stanley Richard, Mark Berry had a pretty good night tonight. Yeah. Irish Lewis has played a lot. So those are a lot of defensive backs. David McWilliams trying to get their feet wet here early in the season. Good game to put him in for that. Tipped up in the air. Incomplete. 7.06 remaining to play in the game. You know, last night watching TV, Westlake High School pulled one out 32 to 27. The quarterback for Westlake, Jimmy Saxton. 18 carries for 188 yards. You don't you suppose don't suspect that. he is. Really, the son of James Saxton, who Started and dashed. I guess he was the first Eric Metcalf here. Well, that was a fine player here. And he is a fine player at Westlake High School. Looked like illegal procedure. Everybody moving on the New Mexico line. Well, what happened there was Leach stepped back early. It seemed to draw Texas offside. That's it, illegal procedure. Yeah, they drew Texas offside. I think the center had the snap wrong. He almost yeah. <laughs> threw the ball. It was a great situation like that a couple of years ago in the NFL. And the officials all get to, got together, and Pat Haggerty came to the center of the field, punched on his handy-dandy field microphone during the Eagles and Giants game and announced to a sold-out Meadowland Stadium and a national television audience, please disregard the flag. The penalty's on the wrong team. <laughs> Needless to say, several people watching wish to know which team was the wrong team in Pat's estimation. Leach running for his life again. Across the middle and a nice reception by Tory Brown, a 5'11", 165-pound senior out of Pasadena, California. Boy, Leach was really being pursued heavily. Watch that Texas rush again. But they, they forced the end inside the tackle inside, and then when he clears the end, he's got outside leverage, so he's got some time. That James Patton is the one chasing him, 6'3", 257-pound freshman out of League City, and he can move. Yes, he can. First and 10 for New Mexico, 6'39", 6'38", and counting down. Ashley, did he drop the ball? And he's at the 44-yard line. Didn't look like he got a good handle on that handoff. Patton on the tackle for Texas. This is a good chance for all the Texas kids to play tonight. It's a good chance for all of them to go home and feel good. And let's face it, the bottom line on Texas is they wanted a night they could feel good. They felt awfully bad after BYU. That was a long trip home. Other youngster, Gary Gibbons, 6'4", 230-pound sophomore out of Houston, Texas. He's also in the game. Leach will throw, second down. He needs nine. And it's complete to about the 42-yard line to Myron Ashley, James Lee, number 30, on the tackle for Texas. So that'll leave New Mexico about six yards short of the first with third down coming up. Clock continues to run, 5.37 left to play. You know, Leach is going to wind up with some passing yards in this game, isn't he? Well, he's about at 100 now, isn't he? I bet she's over that, Bill. She's nipped away. Nipped away. I'll bet she's pretty well into it. Big Whoa. rush and knocked down. Tommy Jeter. 
freshman out of Deer Park. He had eight sacks his senior year at Deer Park. Runs a 4-7-40. Look at the 6'5", 233-pound Jeter. And that's another freshman for Texas. This kid, Jeter, was considered by some of the scouting services the best defensive lineman available in a recruiting crop this year. That's saying a lot with Moriarty around. Yeah. By the way, uh, Leach is at 122 yards. 18 of 35. He's thrown two interceptions. Realize this guy threw for 390 last week against New Mexico. Oh, he's a good quarterback. It's just that he's had to run for his life. Here comes oh. a blitz again from the outside. Boone Powell, number 56, 6'4", 216-pound freshman out of Duncanville, Texas. Boy, and the Duncanville program is right proud. Powell comes from the slot on the blitz. <laughs> Duncanville just peacock proud over beating Plano earlier this high school season. You bet. That was a big upset. Huge, huh? huge game. But really one of the things that signifies just how far Duncanville's come and at what a level they're playing now. You really got a feel for Jeremy Leach. What a beating he's taken. Donovan Forbes is now the third quarterback used by Texas. Forbes, the youngster out of Baytown, has been the backup quarterback here for a couple of years. Pass incomplete, intended for Chris Samuels. I'm not, I'm not sure at this point of the game that Mike Shepard in New Mexico appreciates a third string quarterback coming in and throwing a rollout pass on first down. I, I think this may, may annoy them a bit. I wonder if Mike Shepard is he's probably thinking i wish alabama had come to college station and i had stayed, stayed in new home. mexico that's right it was a beautiful day at college station today wasn't it <laughs> yes it was gorgeous day for a football game if i was alabama i think i'd want to catch a&m at this time of yes. the season yeah i agree with you samuels running left first down still on his feet as he goes out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. John no. Bell not Well, in defense of Bill Curry and Steve Sloan, they really didn't know what the hurricane was going to do. and They True. thought they could get in, but they didn't know whether they could get out. It was a tough situation. I know we all had different plans for this weekend. Yes. Yeah, we all had our conditions. In fact, you came into Austin early, yeah. and I caught an early flight just to avoid any kind of possible problem. That's right. Figure, get here, get the game done. Then if you're stuck here, that's another matter. The Texas officials had thought about maybe postponing this game until Sunday. Yeah, there was a possible 2 o'clock Sunday start. At the, uh, they waited until last night to get the final weather report before they decided to hold it, and so far we've had gorgeous weather. 434 left to play. 41 nothing, Texas. Samuels over right guard inside the 30, about the 27 yard line. Yeah, I don't think you'll see any more Donovan Forbes roll and throw plays this game. I, we're going to go with a between the tackles type of running attack and get this puppy over. David Folk made the tackle for the Lobos, a freshman out of Aztec, New Mexico. And here comes that rain again. Samuel so far tonight. Now that was his 10th carry for 59 yards. David McWilliams trying to get that running game in gear. Last year, Norm, after Texas lost its first two games to Auburn and to BYU, the next two games, McWilliams decided to go strictly on the ground. He gave up the passing game, said he wanted his offensive lineman to become more aggressive, and it looks like in the second half, that's what he's done. Well, that's going to be the bread and butter of this team. The bread and butter of this team is Metcalf and Norris creating yardage. Uh, Texas isn't by any means, regardless of who plays quarterback here, a passing team. Is that enough for the first? Yeah, they're that much short, says Donovan Forbes. Well, who's your number one team this week? Is it going to be UCLA, or will you keep Miami at number one? Oh, I think whenever you rally to win at Michigan, you've got to remain number one. If you pounded Florida State and rallied to beat Michigan at Michigan, you stay number one. Uh, it sets up another interesting situation, though, in that Miami now has cleared two major hurdles. And you'd have to consider them a front runner for the Orange Bowl. And if they get there, who comes from the Big Eight but Oklahoma again? All right. Uh, if they should beat Nebraska. 
And it's a first down. Chris Samuels gets it to the 23-yard line. Deion Morrow on the tackle, but another Texas first down as the clock runs. Well, it stops momentarily here while they set the chains, and then it'll run again at 328. Boy, a bunch of contenders already have some losses this season, though, don't they? Yes, they do. Ooh. Before the season, you had to figure Nebraska, Clemson, Florida State, Iowa, and Texas A&M, five teams that could win the national championship, and they already all have a loss in mid-September. Deion Cockrell busts a couple of tackles. He can't bring him down as he gets to about the seven-yard line. Deion Cockrell. Remember that name, 6'1", 196-pounder. Donald Levingston finally collared him at about the seven-yard line. You know, he and Samuels are going to wind up the second and third leading rushers in this game, the Metcalf. That's right. Bobby Bowden and Florida State won a big game. They had to go into Death Valley today. And won it on a fake punt. What nerve to call a fake punt in your own territory. Miami did the same thing, and it worked against Michigan. Oops. Hello. I think Forbes fell on it. And 2.32 on the clock as it runs off here. 